boom, we're fired up. We uh, we got the audacity running in the butt. So uh, we're broadcasting the Dork Table uh, 28 minutes uh, in to the broadcast. A new low. Hey. So, okay, let's see here, Dork. Uh, what is your what is your handle? Oh, I see it at Mental Pancakes. We're gonna go find. No, wait a minute. Is it cakes or mental pancakes? Mental he pancakes. Has, he's got two names up there, but I think he rechanged his mind there. Oh. All right. Let's go find. Uh, let's go find cakes on wire. Yeah. You know what? The the uh, Skype. I, I don't. Hmm. I guess I don't have enough uh, internet strength. Uh, just as I, well. Yeah, I was having problems. Remember way back when on the. Yeah, Skype. just just as well. All but all this stuff's been malfunctioning for everybody. We've had extreme weather and politics and soup du jour for yeah. months. Anyway, I've, I've just been having a, a headphone meltdown, and all of a sudden what works on one thing doesn't work on the other one, and everybody wants to be specific, and I wasn't equipped. I couldn't get to the place to get a set today. I had something come up. How do you, uh, okay, maybe add people? Oh, no, I don't want to add people. Go find people. I don't know how to. Are we streaming? You yeah, might want to yeah, say live. Dork Table and RLM and hey to everybody. Alrighty. We only well, started doing... a half hour late. <laughs> I'm trying to find Dorks over here. Dork, can you find me? I'm real simple. You just spell my name as Vine, V I N E, or, or V N E, or V N E. Yeah, I don't even. I haven't I talked to him on here yet. Then so, everything... but I've seen him on seen him over on Mines lately. I, don't I think know I've why. seen him today. I don't know why they just can't have like uh, a simulated toggle switch or a push button that says what it does on it. It's like push this button to uh, begin, or you know, make that would them be green, too- and then you know when you want to end, make them red. I-, I tell you, I think they they maybe they got to do stuff for proprietary purposes to to be so <laughs> different for their copyright in their program. No, I'm being serious. Maybe they gotta make it so stupid that, that, that nobody can come along and say, I'm <laughs> just as stupid as you and I made all these stupid no buttons in the, 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 the uh, and they're laughing at us the whole time. Hey, Calling us tech tards and things like that. It's 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 not nice. I, I just know it's a cruel joke. Very probably cruel joke. well hey probably let's say hi. This is the dork mm-hmm. table, folks. Oh, are we God. live on RLM finally? We are. We've been people live. On RLM. Yeah. Really There's. Hey. Say hello to the fine folks at Real Liberty Media. Where are you from? Hey. I think I will. I will go up to the top of the list. I could start it at the bottom and work my way up. But we're going to go in alphabetical order. Yeah. We've got bots and bodies to play with in the reallibertymedia.com chat for your mental excitement. Today, we've got barman, Grim Dork. Grim Dork, hey, that's, he hadn't done that in a while. Moose Girl, Miss Kate, uh, Brackets DC, Asmo, Chloe, Chow Sedoni, Chloe, Echelon, me, Graham Z, I B Don C, Meisterbrow, Poxified, hey, one pox, Rain, RLM Fluke, A Bubbler, Rob Works, Rome's the Phantom, Beetle, hey, Beetle's been uh, housebound and it's driving him crazy, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, D Dork Cake, Z, A Mental, uh, I was using Dork Life when I was on Linux, so I could see what the chat was saying, but oh, what a nightmare that was. Frumped, Frumpy, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kozu, mm-hmm. Nensen, Jubois, Poxphone, Poxahome, Ponsas, Sock Puppet, Skittle Uno, and... Vinny Dork Chocolate. <laughs> and the Ponder Gander got signed in oh, behind Dork Chocolate. Sometimes I worry about you. You know what? I'd be very interested to know how many actual no. Vinnies there are. Uh, I'm going to say maybe One. 300, 300 One. different nicks that I've uh, accumulated. Well, well, yeah, but that's your thing. You, you get a kick Giggle at it doing that. Yeah. You're a words. You, you, what you need to do. Let me give you some advice that nobody else has given you yet. Stop trying to write. 
Okay. Yeah. I, what you I, do? Yeah, it, just... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> There's hope for you. Let me finish the whole concept. First thing is you stop trying to do something, and the second thing is you find your friend that knows where the mushrooms are at, and then you sit down and have a couple mushrooms, and then try not to write. <laughs> Did you see how long my blog is? You didn't I mean, listen. Yes, I did. No. I'm not trying. Oh, okay. I, I, I actually, what I did yesterday, man, I threw it all. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, you might consider it wide up some paper, you know, your rewrite, revise, revise. So, yeah, I, I don't count any uh, non-success as a failure. I, I consider it just uh, another opportunity to try it another way. So, you know what I did? I, I went back to the uh, just doing radio and not doing the uh, the video at the same time. Ah, uh, hey, I do it way there. too much. See, I mean, the radio yep. writing is the speaking. That's the that's the part that uh, some aren't catching. But uh, well, writing, my writing stuff, has though really, I think, improved a great deal. And there's different types of writing. You know, I'm going for grammar and you know um, proper uh, diction and, and punctuation and so forth. And, and in that respect, I've gotten a lot better. And I've done a few exercises. Circle, circle gave me one I didn't do yet. But uh, well, when you write, do you write the way you speak, or do you write the way that you think? Well, well I'll I, give you an example. I, all right, I, I've been a I, I cuss all the time, right? Yeah. But when I when I write my blogs, I don't I don't use swear words in my my writing. Right. It's not it. It's not because I'm a clean guy. It's just that doesn't doesn't need them. There's no reason for them. Oh man, I'll have to find that in the history. I forgot to save that. I'd have to make. I got a real good sight. It. It was uh, huh. the 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 name that you couldn't pronounce and uh, that I can't quite pronounce, but it means uh, finished or completed. Uh, <sighs> the uh, by uh, I see V Y. How did that spell V Y N O L I something? I forget. It's a Russian word. It means complete. But anyway, so. Ah. I when I was searching that word out, I found a, a site, and it was uh, it's, uh, excellent. I have to find it again in the history, but it's uh, analyzing the writing <sighs> in Russian and then translating it to English, and that that's some real gab right there, man. But Well, wait a minute. You don't get scammed by that translating bullshit, do you? What do you mean? I mean, not that it's not done. Okay, what I mean is kind of a lot bigger than just what I started out to say. But I'll give you this example. We all know uh, that if a foreigner doesn't know a certain you know amount of English, that if you told him, "Hey, I want to fuck your sister," it means in English, you know, uh, "Hey, let's go party, let's have a nice time," but not tell him it's a foul thing that'll probably get your face kicked in. You know what I mean? They, you can mislead people with words they don't know. Well, I was down in uh, Mexico one time, down in Tijuana. <laughs> across the border uh, oh, no. i was fixing to go back back north and uh i had me a bottle of husano rojo mezcal and uh there's some young, youngsters i was young i was 20 something then and uh so some youngsters there some Me- mexicanos just a little bit younger than me and one says uh hey you got one sister for me in estados unidos i said si sí, verdad cardinal uh, I said, I'll, I'll have to translate this thing. They say, yeah, I've, I've got a sister for you up there, brother. I said, uh, I'll introduce you to, uh, anytime you, you come up. I said, come on up. We'll get you together. I said, but in the meantime, we're down here in Mexico. And I said, so you've got one sister for me. And his buddy's busted up, man. I capped him good. <laughs> but we're speaking Spanish. And uh, I, I used to speak a little bit better when I practiced all the time. Well, the... the- the comment was more about how easily we're tricked easily. with language. Yeah, I know. Nah. How how easily we're tr- – I thought I'm trying to get your fucking attention so you'll stop know. reading your links. Uh, we, we get tricked with words, right? And it's just as an example. If you teach a foreigner like the Danes could teach me shit in Danish that's not real, how would I know? I got to trust them. See? Well, yeah, that's well, – okay. That's but the here's, joke that gets you on right, right. learning another here, language, right? But here's the assumption. The assumption that we share, we speak English. No, we don't. Uh-uh. We speak something, but whatever it is, it's not English. All the words have been changed. All the important shit. And then if that's not the case, like Bill Clinton defined what is, is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> See? Yeah, right. Well, right, but it exists in our 
you know, financial life and our uh, verbal life. And we think we know shit we don't know. That, that's all I'm trying to get at. And you can trick people into believing things because you got to start somewhere. If you don't know what something means, if somebody tells you what it means, you believe them. And most of the time without any proof, you just go, okay. Yeah, we're, You're, we're all pretty guilty of that. When I first started out, what I've been here since 2011 on the internet, I guess. Uh, yeah, pretty not not a long time for some people, but made use for it. Uh, I I got fooled, you know, sharing some stuff early on, and you know, some of that fake, uh, not true stuff, and got called on it. And I because it I looks good at yeah, like Mandela. If you don't know anybody from South Africa, then you probably think Mandela was some great guy. The Mandela effect. Well, okay, that came years later after what I'm talking about, but uh, I I met people from South Africa that did not like Mandela well, and told me why. But I'll bet you they were it, white too, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the other side of that is like me talking about a, a president that resided in the power seat when I was in America. It makes a big difference to the listener. I'm not just reciting books shit I read. I was there. I saw it with my own two eyes. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah, well, well, you know, here, here English we, is is really a, a common like like saying Spanish. You know, there's different types of Spanish because a, mm-hmm. a person in one country will not readily understand another. I was watching a video of some folks over there in England, and uh, they were trying to guess what some of the American words meant. You know, and uh, I can't uh-huh. recall any off head, but yeah, English and American, and even Southern American, which. Uh, but, you know, I've been in so many places. Huh? And uh, my, uh, my accent is not specific to any certain region either, right? Did I lose you? Did you run after Hannah? Hannah's on a bark, so I'm, I'm muted. Oh, okay. I can't believe how many links that I go through. Um, ben... Over at Sound Minds is, uh, you know, doing some of these videos starting off, and I and I released them. I said this is crap, and uh, let's let's start again and go back to the to the beginning, start from scratch, and uh, then let. Uh, so I, well, I ain't talked to him today, but I'll I'll give him the blog, and all the links, and then the compressed audio. Uh, let him uh, take that right there and use his his own artunication and put the uh, the video together. Because I've seen some stuff he's done. Uh, he does a really great job. He took a couple of my links there and put them together. Judge, uh, well, common law, grand jury, Judge uh, Darby. That's, uh, I was talking about that yesterday. I get some people in a lot of trouble. But uh, he put that together, His this audio with the uh, shooting of Lavoie Finnicum. And uh, they meld us so well. And, uh, yeah, he, he does a great job. We all have our place and our abilities, so. Um, yeah, and that that particular thing is going to be a, a a lifelong adventure for you. It's not going to end. What what's not the your association oh. with that Bundy trial? Oh yeah. And you know, I was listening to your show last night, and yeah, you were you know you're involved. Yeah. You're like you know, it's like bacon and eggs. You know, the the bacon's committed, and the the uh, eggs are. <laughs> Well, never mind. I fucked up the joke. I heard a joke and I fucked it up. Anyway, you know, it's that party. You're just stuck in it. You can't get out of it. Yeah, there's a uh, there's an obligation. Well, and, same and thing. That's why I say, you know, I, I say I'm Forrest Gump famous. You know, he he happened to be at a certain place at a certain time. And, you know, that uh, in the movie, if you've seen it. And by the way, the book is com- way different than the, the movie. They always are. Yeah. Well, I didn't watch the film yet, but I saw you post that. And I listened to your show yesterday. Which made pretty good sense. The uh, one you did on RLM. Yeah, I, no, don't... I mean, which uh, you didn't watch. You said something. No, I said, well, I said watch. I meant listen because oh, okay. I watch TV. <laughs> Whenever I got a TV set going with a, with a link, I think I'm watching TV still. I'm old, Vinny. I come from another time where there was mm. not all this shit. Man, you know, I watched all this. All this aggravating shit in life you know, watched, that happens. Uh, it's terrible. Yeah, terrible crap. And, uh, yeah, I understand that. Well, okay, I was watching a live length of the uh, French problem today in Paris, right? 
And it, it was looking kind of rough, and there, there's lots of people. The streets are crowded with bodies. There's no traffic, no cars on the road. Cops, as far as the eye can see, black coats, yellow vests. And then they pan to this somebody starting a fire in the middle of the street with a trash can. And that usually ends badly. But what my question was is who started that damn fire? Hmm. See, it doesn't matter who started it. What matters is something's on fire in the street, and we're having a, uh, a riot. And those people in the yellow, if that wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are now. They always blame the victim. Yeah, that's uh, exactly what they do. Yeah, accuse the uh, accuser. In other words. I think that that's why, you know, like when they riot after a World Series or a whatever game, yeah. the reason nobody does anything is because that's the goal of what they're doing. That's what the system is trying to get the public to do. The, the riot, yeah. It's the insurance. thousands of years, right? Yeah. Insurance goes up, gas prices go, security goes, everything, prices, 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 prices. Security, 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 please. You know? So not everybody can live away from a city, I suppose, what, what we've come to. I enjoy being in the city, but I, uh, you know, for a time. but For an hour or two. Well, maybe. I mean, even for some weeks or months even. You know, oh, no, I'm past all that. Well, yeah, no, I'm past. No, not, not to stay. You know, I, I, when I'm in, like, Vegas, I'm always like, man, I hope uh, crap don't go bad while I'm, you know, before I get back home. <laughs> yeah, I know. So that would be know one that. of the worst places to be, you know, a couple million people and, uh, you know, in the desert, uh, the food runs out fast, the water's going to run out. You know, there's any number of scenarios where, uh, you know, we can see a, a society uh, society down situation. Okay, well, there's two ways to look at that, though. Look out your door and tell me what you see, and then look on the Internet and tell me what you see. There's two different worlds there. And I don't know anybody personally that's living, that's on the Internet and the RLM, that's living in this violent, vicious fucking mess that we read about every day. I was talking Most the- to uh, Chloe earlier, and I was showing her a picture, and uh, I see the the scar on my forehead. Uh, and that was uh, that was like... I think four or five jabs I got and some cuts all together. Uh, and, you know, that's that's serious violence. I was in Vegas 20-some-odd uh, years ago, and uh, I've been in those places. They happen. And I'm going to tell you, it's very real. And the, the depravity of, of man, the, uh, the, the lack of uh, empathy and uh, understanding, you know, that's, that's all been built in and conditioned now into the society. Uh, that's been coming up for several generations now. Uh, I've been away from it for a lot of years. I'm just maybe I just don't realize that still because the the home I remember is not the home I'm seeing people talk about at all. I, I mean, watched. even though even though they had riots and shit, you it wasn't as as filthy and dirty as it is now. I can't believe that politicians allow their society. To have people living in the street. And that really rocked me when I saw that tent city shit. That's part of it. There, uh, Cindy Lake, she ran for um, council in, uh, in Henderson in, in Clark County, Nevada. A uh, friend that I've known over the years in the Internet and then was able to you know meet in person again this last year. Uh, mm. She's a libertarian. There, There's people like uh, Brian Hyde. Uh, he, he does the... Uh, uh, over there on the Liberty Effect, and he, he produces uh, a few shows, uh, one for Ammon Bundy and uh, uh, a new guy, uh, what's his name, Carey. Uh, uh, Joe Carey does a show, and then they've got a new guy. I'll, I'll go find his name. I forgot already. Um, kind of a libertarian. It's out of Utah. Uh, and, of course, these folks are, are Latter-day Saints, LDS, uh, the Mormon faith. And a lot of people, you know, are real wigged out about Mormons. You know, some people in mainstream <laughs> Christianity call them uh, cults and stuff. But yeah. I'm going to tell you, as far as consistency, I'm going to say the ones that are called cults, and I don't think they call Seventh-day Adventist cults anymore, but uh, Jehovah Witnesses and uh, the Latter-day Saints and Seventh-day Adventists, I think they're more uh, serious about their faith and, and not... Uh, uh, you know, it's not something that's a back burner like you hear the uh, uh, 
uh, go repent on Sunday, you know, party on Saturday type of deal. They, they're seem to be more I don't, I, charity. I don't know. The people that scream the loudest are usually the biggest frauds. Well, are the the, the zealots in a, in a sense then that uh, have uh, a fire and dedication? There's uh, maybe so, but I also I I saw a guy do a link and I swore it was me talking. He said something to the effect of, "The relationship I have with God is none of your business. It's between me and God. So what what do I need to tell you about it for?" And that's the way I see it. I know I pick on you, so to speak, because you're on the radio with yeah, me, but don't. it's it's the religion nutters that bother me, not people that are spiritual. They're spiritual. They don't shove books in your face and shake their head when you smoke a joint. Well, that's that's a different group. Of, but see, they use religion as a cover, so to speak. You know, like a, a it's acceptable. You know, you can have a group call itself whatever it wants, and there's certain names that are going to get respect, and religion usually works. You can't really, you know, give them shit for their religion. If a, if a little old uh, ladybug on the ground looked up at you and thought, wow, this is something amazing that I'm able, even able to see this creature, it must be God. And then uh, <laughs> it goes to all his little friends and ladybug friends and says, uh, and, and pretty soon, you know, uh, mounting away over there, there's another ladybug that's uh, or a ladybug that's heard about this uh, Flash creature and uh, of being God, and they're not calling you Flash anymore. They maybe they're calling you the Mash or uh, <laughs> Squash. Yeah. So it's not a person cannot define God. You can uh, you can look and and perhaps give some attributes of but what uh, this God creature would be this god being uh, bad words but anyways it, it doesn't matter what you say it's it's exhibited you know you you hear that don't do as i do do as i say well it's exhibited I don't, interaction I, and, and i just found it say. i found an easy way to cut out all the fighting with people about it huh. i don't talk about it with them i mean i'll talk to you about it but like normal everyday conversation, no, religion ain't going to happen. I'm not going to talk about that because it's personal. It's a personal thing to me. Whatever my thing is with whatever it is, it don't need me to protect it. That's that's the whole idea that I got from it. Now, there's some sometimes in some situations, and I've uh, uh, my brother and I uh, did some real good uh, production. He did the video and brought the stuff together for you know just discussing a global flood and uh <laughs> global yeah. flood yeah that's yeah. it's absolute I, I see all this science i watched uh daniel this documentary yesterday the first part of it on daniel boone and mm. and and it's religious how these the scientists these evolutionists say anytime you hear them say millions of years they'll say millions of years that it's 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 like a preacher at the pulpit up there. Uh, I want to tell you, brother, come on down and believe, 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 yeah. and believe like I tell you, and don't believe any other way, you know? Yep. Uh, you want to find what is, there. there's absolutes. And people can say, oh, well, your truth is not my truth. Well, truth is truth, and, and then, so sometimes it is subjective. But <laughs> when you're well, the, through this life, you've got to figure yeah. out how we're going to get through this peaceably. And, and that's that's the ultimate uh, bottom line there is do. And, you know, we're we're like this here at Real Liberty Media. We call ourselves anarchists. Or some of us do and uh, to do no harm. And that's that's the whole of the law. And that's what uh, that's what God says, too. And when uh, when Jesus said that, you know, you can sum it up. Uh, I've heard it too, and others say it. One, uh, the whole of the law is to love your neighbor, but uh, also to to love God, since God is the Creator, and everything comes from Him. You want to eventually find your way, at least in that direction. So mm. nobody can tell you what it is. You've got to be able to make that connection yourself. So, uh, so pretty people, much the long way of saying what I said. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. So, we agreed so, on the dark table. Yeah. Mark this day in history. <laughs> ding 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 ding. People got to work through this yourself, but that doesn't mean that you can't be a guide necessarily. Uh, perhaps uh, people I believe. Uh, you know, yeah. I talk about this vibrational thing. It's it's mm. really amazing when 
uh, well, a man. I used to not live in a, uh, you know, a harmonic, uh, a life of harmony. So, you know, I know the difference. And, and for me, it's so ah, obvious when, when See. things, yeah. You know, yep. you don't catch me out, run around, uh, riding down the highway, uh, drinking or smoking weed with, you know, uh, friends or nothing like that. It's what's going to happen. But, you know, you're going to put yourself in a bad spot. It's jeopardy, yeah. You're taking your chances, right. Mm -hmm. Society is designed to do the opposite of what it, you're told it's supposed to do. They're just looking for a few good men to put in jail so they can, you know, have a... a profit share for their what what do you call it shareholders man that is an evil system dude i i've been up close into it of course even having gone to prison uh when i was uh young quarter century old anyways um it wasn't uh it wasn't a, a bad experience as a matter of fact it's really a positive experience for me but the uh i went in a place like say uh schaefer cox is where they've got them it's the same type of prison that they've got down there in Guantanamo Bay. And that's where they're keeping uh, political prisoners. People there are standing up against this evil government. You know, Cal talks about it. Calls it this, uh, this evil, uh, this oh, yeah. on us. And, and we see the depravity of man. And I watched this movie the other day. And it was such a, a terrible uh, movie to behold. Because it was so realistic. Well, one, one scene is this guy... Uh, gets a, a family to stop there you know after societal collapse the power went out and stays out for a while but anyways uh, so he's all like nice and the guy's no no worries you know no alarm bells and you know he walks gets out of his truck and goes over there to help the guy fix his car and so then he walks in front of him boom he just bashed his head in with a hammer and now kidnaps his wife he's laid dead and he runs him over in the road and kidnaps his wife and daughter and uh kills the wife and rapes the daughter and kills her and just going on they just kill and kill and take uh with no regard to anybody else that's that's the difference that's where you go in the long run you go towards self and, and to fully occupy your own uh desires and there's a difference between want and a need and a, a greed right so anyways yes. the uh oh, no. the depravity of man is evil but it uh, in the movie, at, at one hour, 11 minutes, and 11 seconds. See, there's some of that. I wonder if they did that on time. Yeah, of purpose. course they did. But it's yeah. perfect. It says you always have a choice. That's right. To do right or not to do right. Or, or to attempt to do right anyways, if nothing else. And it, and it finished. The movie finishes. And it goes that uh, there's good people just like you. There is good people just like you. So don't give up on the world. And that's the message. And Christianity mainstream is going to say, oh, there's nothing we can do. It's all God's plan. And <laughs> Okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. I was wondering if you're going to get to that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I blame my people for that shit. I don't know where these people get off on believing this Jew crap. Well, it just annoys the shit out of me, you know, and I'm born history. in, the, you, you always give me this crap, but you know, you're either born into something or you're not. If I was physically black and I said, yeah, I'm black, you wouldn't argue with that. But if you uh, talk about religions that you're born into, other people say, no, you're not. Okay. Well, I'm not, but according to the paperwork that I've carried all my life and the relations that I've had through blood, they all said I was. So I don't even want to be, but what do you do with this kind of shit? Indeed. I mean, hell, if things ever hit the shit, you know, shit ever hit the fan in earlier times in my life, I was even prepared to even give a trip to Israel as a possibility because I didn't care where I went. I still don't, but I'm with Cirque now, so Cirque don't want to go to Israel. I wouldn't want or to I'd go. go. And, and a lot, yeah, of, a lot of the Christians, you, see, they believe that, um, that the Zionist uh, state is uh, is demonstrating uh, of uh, God's chosen people. That's what they say. But uh, <laughs> what the Bible well, I like does, to... I'd like to say this though: what the Bible does say is the Jews are not God's chosen people. That that Israel is a spiritual nation uh, of, of being. Are, are, you know, it's not a blood. It's not a reality. Color. It's a metaphor. Yeah, it's right. a 
It's so, an idea, a concept. It, it, Don't make it real fucking with blood and guts, you dumbasses. So, it's an idea. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Uh, talking to the majority, probably everybody here is not uh, uh, saying that the, the Bible has any authority, but people that do say that, it's like uh, say that they call themselves Christian, and there's so many different uh, uh, handles you can put on that. But what does the Bible say in there? It says uh, it says that 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 Israel was given this time. They had all these. Uh, at, if we had a king, if we had judges, you know this and that, then then we could live right and be a good godly people, you know. But but they failed always and an failed excuse. and failed, and their time ran out. It was given. It was allotted. Uh, so what what is this guy Jesus? He comes in, and, and this is all <laughs> part of a time schedule here on the 69th week. It was given to Israel the uh, 70 weeks, and uh, that's another longer story. But anyway, so <laughs> they killed Jesus yeah. in, uh, you know, halfway through the 70th week, and then uh, it was over. You know, they failed, and then Christianity arose out of that, and that's supposed to be the spiritual, you know, the Bible says that God could raise up rocks. But so then the church fails, right? Because everybody wants it their way. Um, <laughs> and, and then you got, you know, Constantine come along and a big split. And so uh, everybody, there's all these churches that say, you know, we've got the truth. But what I heard somebody say, Shauna Cox, she told me, and I thought it was so great. And she was actually, uh, you know, kind of belittling me in my faith in a way because she's LDS. <laughs> she says, you know, we're all in different it's like we're all in school and we're in different uh, grades. I, I like that. I really do. Mm. So. Okay. I got different ideas. I think that the groups are the problem. I think communicating is the problem. I think you know? not communicating well is the problem. Well, what if the game rules weren't bullshit from from the start like they are now hey, Donald, you think you think that if the game was was written honestly that we would have the results we have now i don't no we would be all so content there would be no strife in life we would all uh, everybody would have all their needs uh, met in surplus yeah but when, this isn't a popular idea they don't want that they want commerce and competitive and these people get fucked out and these people get everything and this is what society wants it's how they play it hey somebody fixed it i think grimner did uh he's all man he's so good on this damn computer i'm so envious he has no idea i'm grateful I've, and thankful but today was even a bigger yeah, it was a bigger clusterfuck than usual. Just uh, whatever I tried to do wouldn't work. Didn't matter what it was. So hey, Woody's uh, uh, Woody followed uh, me over on. I'm pretty sure this is our same Woodman that's following me on Twitter. Is that you, uh -oh. Woody? Hey, Weird. Woodman sixty eight. That's gotta be him. See, and then all these things that I am definitely against that the rest of you guys aren't because you use them. Me. I ain't going to use them. But I'm the fringe of the fringe of the fringe of the fringe. I know that. Well, I had to restrict but to the point of down to some of these other sites. Uh, so I kind of maintain myself down to Twitter and Facebook and uh, uh, realliberty.org. Ah, yeah. Well, too, see, these places are too big. You can't get... I mean, like me and you can have a good fucking um, to-the-bone argument, Have be pissed off for a couple of weeks, and then it's over. But Twitter, you're never going to get close enough to. You're going to just be. It's all invisible in a in a light. You know, it's not real. That's the way I feel about it. You guys, maybe not so much. But what Trump does, I don't give a fuck what Trump does or who else. Uh, Obama or Pelosi or none of the the Queen of fucking Denmark, for all that's worth. None of these people have power over me. But the consensus in society and in the electronic world is quite the opposite they don't seem to realize you got to be a willing participant you have to go to them you avoid them they avoid you right back they want nothing to do with somebody that doesn't have something they want that's Not all what society is because sometimes just the very uh, essence in, in life is enough that they take that and make money off of it um in any number of ways they just they're vampires you know, that put people in prison, innocent, good people. You know, some that uh, that I've come to know, 
uh, one that I wish I'd have got to know more, and perhaps the, that I could have been a little more educated to uh, uh, steer some of these people away, like Bruce Doucette. You know, he's going to be the rest of his life in prison. I've seen a, a prison pitch of him, picture of him now. He's buffed up, and, and he's got that prison stare. Now, when I got out of prison, uh, I, I show you a picture. You'd show to my eyes for um, uh, maybe a good year anyways. And, you know, I wasn't hardened. And, well, I got a good question for you. You believe in Jesus, right? Yes or no? Yeah. I'm just, okay. Yep. Was he a white or a black human being? He'd been brown, certainly. So, I mean, there's all, okay. all, all right. just different uh, hues of brown. So. All right. Even but, though, see, there's there's an equal amount of people that believe the opposite. He was white. There's people that believe he never existed. There's people, you know, everybody's split up. We're all chop, 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 chop. There's several uh, there's several works that demonstrate that uh, okay uh, Jesus but, of Nazareth was uh, was a real person. Yeah, I've okay. got a book over here, uh, uh, Josephus. Um, there's some modern but, works. There's a but, lawyer that that proved the case. Okay. To imagine that he was a white blonde haired guy is insane. Well, Just no. of the geographics of where the guy was supposed to be, you know, born. That's like telling people in the in the uh, in the church that. Uh, well, when they when their loved ones die, they go straight up into Jesus's arms, and it's all comfort doctrines, you know. When when you die, I mean, if you're gonna believe the Bible, then believe the Bible. The Bible says when you die, you you're dead in the ground, you know, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. I I don't know. I can't really make sense of what I've read out of that book, but I'll I'm listening. Yeah, that that all the mainstream churches will tell you that. Oh, if you don't. Sign up where with us, uh, you're gonna burn in hell forever. Bible doesn't and they believe, that. And people believe this though, and they Who? give these people their fucking money. What uh, what kind of evil uh, creature that would be called God? What what kind of evil would that be to make? Uh, basically, you know, if you go look at it yourself, that you had maybe children, and he's like, well, you know, I like you to be able to cut hay and here you are wanting to run around over here and chase girls and so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna kill you just kill you mm -hmm. dead mm -hmm. wow that'd be an evil person right mm -hmm. well what if there was a god that uh, said oh uh, this little 13 year old girl should uh let's say some well like this movie say that that one girl had survived that instead of being murdered and after having been subjected to the evil torture of these uh, evil people and being raped and uh, all the other trauma and, you know it's beyond the body into the mind so she had been perhaps so broken that she took her life and then oh some christian would come along and tell you yeah she's gonna burn in hell forever now hmm. yeah that's, well, it's uh, just that's kinda... assassination of the character of god and uh, i'm still trying to work through this to be able to put it in words for a uh, circle she's uh She's asked me because she says that uh, she's mad at God. I said, you got that right. I said, I believe that we are judging God, and we have that right. Well, we, wow. don't have, we don't have all the information, so, I mean, that requires uh, uh, our due diligence to be able to understand. Uh, I, right? I, think, I think we just don't understand it because we're lied to about shit that we need to know. Uh -huh. and, and, and drifting, yeah, we're pushed away from what we need to know and fed a bunch of bullshit that we don't need to know. Yeah. Okay, I was reading, like, even Zappa was saying 30 years ago, they took civics out of the curriculum in the school system and replaced it with some bullshit. They used to teach the uh, Constitution and these, and when I went to school, they didn't teach any of that. I don't remember anything about being taught Constitution or rights or none of that bullshit. I don't recall. And I then, remember saying Pledge of Allegiance in uh, grade school. Yeah, but as I, I, as I was growing up, I don't remember any any educator ever taking a step towards that civics, you know, this is how government operates. Not nothing. It was all ignored so that we could learn about George Washington's teeth. Yeah. That, that's a lie. Anyways, he had slave teeth. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know they weren't made out of wood. Blah, blah, blah. But this is what I mean. It, whatever we hear, doesn't matter what it is or who it's from or who it's about. 90% of it could be true. But ten percent isn't. I guarantee you, there's lies in there somewhere. So, 
on those issues where you find 10% of it to be bullshit, why believe any of it? I don't understand the logic. Well, they only lie a little bit, so I better get my car registered and pay my taxes, by God. Uh, never well, found it necessary to support that. I was watching that documentary on Daniel Boone yesterday, and his family came into uh, Pennsylvania, 1700s, and then on down to uh, North Carolina. Uh, and then you know, he made his uh, name, of course, uh, exploring Kentucky, fighting with them. Those some them Indians there did not like no white folks, and they killed them as quick as they could over there. So anyways, uh, I, I believe he was, uh, his family was Puritan, and uh, uh, that this is a real strict religion, I guess, then. And, and so uh, I believe it was his oldest daughter and one of his sons. They uh, outmarried, I think is what they call it. They didn't marry within <laughs> the faith. So that's, uh, they, uh, you know, the father, he's responsible. They brought him up, and he was... Uh, non too apologetic about more or less saying that uh, you know uh, that's matters the heart and uh, everybody you know we we're responsible for self and then when you get these binding rules of this religion no you're stuff, you're not you're not responsible you can't you're not even allowed to be responsible for yourself if you take a step to be responsible for yourself the society will lock you up well, first opportunity they that. get yeah yeah, don't really even true. don't try to be your own man. Don't try to speak your own mind. Don't try to be you. Try to join a fucking group and be accepted. And it goes to, in my mind, organized religion, not God, not this God thing. The God thing is personal, but the organized religions of the world all suck ass. I, all of them. I'm going to tell you what, every church, any church that you'd ever go to or find throughout the whole wide world would be a perfect church except for one problem people are in it the people that are in it that's right yeah but because, you know what not yeah. everybody it's not uh, you know a lot of people say oh christians are hypocrites and somebody might judge my life and say oh you're a hypocrite cuz i don't think you never or whatever, you never you tell never me know. what to do well you know you have and i did it and you found out you were wrong i mean be honest with me i guess well, you know what, uh, with me and you, I, mm -hmm. I, at first I was like, what? What happened? Yeah. And then I it was know. like, I, I, was, I was sad, and yeah. then the sads, and then I got mad, and then I was like, what the hell, right? Uh, yeah. Who's yeah. this guy think yeah. he is? And, and like, man, and then I, but I know inside <laughs> of me, right, I have to <laughs> seek to, to make this right. Yeah. It's not something that is some like binding. Oh, I've got to do this, or you know. No, just, but it, it is yeah. who a part of who I am, and it's developed, you know, through time. Because uh, I ain't always been a nice guy. Me Anyways, neither. But I, let me I, finish though. But, yeah, so I'm yeah. going through here all the. I mean, a great range of emotions. I even went up and looked at the internet, and they didn't even have anything that covered all this. Uh, you know, they had four simple ones, right? I'm going back and forth into all that. I said, uh, and then, then I, it came one point, you know, through the mad, all that. And I was like, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you over there. And I just imagined you as, uh, being alone, nobody. And I was got real sad and I go, this is my friend. And, uh, you know, uh, I can't be there to help him. And, and I realized that then the, the walking around and looking at us some more, I says, you know, if I've offended my brother, then uh, what, can, What? you know, you're just not, we're friends. We've been friends for years. And, like, yep. I have to really go look and say, I mean, did I offend you that that, that badly? And uh, yep. I, I have to, uh, you know, seek yeah. to make that right and tell you but that it was, I'm sorry. But it's because... me, yeah, but it's me taking it. So, you know, it's a two-way street. That's why I said I just need a little time to get through this and figure out what the fuck's wrong. And I did on my side. Yeah. And, and then I figured, okay, I saw you in the chat room. Okay, let's get this sorted out. But it takes two people. It's it's not one-sided. Is that me blinking in the back or you? I don't know. I ain't seeing those. Oh, it's me. Uh, I got my uh, my reallibertymedia.org. I got these uh, bells ring when I get somebody to say something on there. Because I don't get a lot of traffic. So I like to know. And I think Pancakes is on there spamming. I was getting the, the notification in my headphones. But any anyhow, look, it takes two people to have a disagreement, not one. 
And I didn't want to have a disagreement. I just wanted to stop and figure out what the fuck was going on. And I did. You you didn't realize what you were saying. I, I've done it. People go, wow, oh, you got a sharp wit. Fuck you. And I go, okay, well, then fine. But never gave any consideration to what I said that pissed him off so bad. And now it was done to me. And I went, hey, yelling and screaming is the last thing that's going to work. What's going to work? Silence. That's what people need is a little room, a little time to think something through without any, you know, without anybody pushing them into the, do you got to do this and you got to do that. I waited for you to do what you were going to do, not tell you what to do. You know, some things aren't meant to be worked out and that's how, you know, you walk away from them. (laughs) And if they're good, you'll find a reason to get it working. And if they're not, you stay gone. You and I are more than just even more than just friends even I, you and i have a very special connection and not a lot of people understand us the way we understand each other i get that yeah and yeah well, your past is intimidating to somebody that's never been say in trouble with the law you know they look down oh you did time oh what did you do Never, you know, never the idea that, hey, maybe you were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. And I things was 15 got years yeah. old. Yeah. And went along with eight other yeah. folks for stupid. Robbery. Yeah. 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 Dumb. Certified but as an adult in Texas. That's how that goes. Legally. See, that's why I don't buy the legal thing, man. It's not, it's not like that. And, you know, they got all these crooks that run shit like psychology and all this mental shit. And then they threw drugs into it. <laughs> And they've got a planet full of people running around on medicine that they don't know what these people are going to do. You know, I've seen the people that go to the doctors and they just get sicker and sicker and fatter and fatter. And you just see all that fluid just holding in their body and they're swelling up and the sickness. And, all that. and then they give them another pill for another symptom. So they're, you know, addressing it is poison. It's accumulating. Somebody gave me some ibuprofen here. Uh, I've taken one of them. Let's see. Yeah. Since I've been here, I think I've taken, I don't know, three or four ibuprofens and a handful of Tylenol. Uh, Arthritis, you know, sometimes. uh, I told you what will fix that, Oh yeah. but you probably don't want to do it. I used to do all kinds of stuff. I got some regiments I got to get. Back to but back into because yeah, you're settled I, back down. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna stress right now. And uh, I got this project going through the winter. And when the spring comes, I'm uh, probably gonna lay the mic down for a while and uh, put some gardening out. I hope I hope the road doesn't call me back out. I want to sit here for a while. And <laughs> yeah, I know. I used to be I know a vegetarian, and man, I was so <laughs> much uh, healthier. And you know, with uh, diabetes and uh, rheumatoid arthritis, or autoimmune diseases, yeah. your body is eating itself up. So you have to well, uh, have to battle that, or, or you know, you're going to succumb. So, I had a good I had a good friend that that ate vegetarian in the '90s, and his his comment was, "The meat makes us angry." Yeah, I think I've heard something like that before. And I don't know, but I'll tell you, some of the loudest voices on the RLM are bacon lovers. The people that scream, I love my bacon, I wouldn't want to be alone with them with a baseball bat, you know, yeah. unarmed. They'd probably help kill, kill me because they're that, ugh, you know, those Rob Works and Mary's, you know, the bacon lovers. Now, me, I give you, oh, shit, you can have all my bacon. I don't give a shit. Bacon's bacon. Oh, Steak. Hogs. I don't care. The worst industry that, that there is, too. They, uh, well, yeah, well, and, Denmark's yeah. a big hog. They're big in the export of of pork here but uh, i could take it or leave i got lucky with you know my taste in life is so i i can control it if it's steak or hamburger it doesn't matter i don't get you know like sir brought home steak tonight and she was all happy about it and i smiled yay steak you know what i did yesterday a steak but i bought a steak a steak and brought it home I, yeah I, saw, I thought inspired. i saw you right there. yeah rob inspired me on that He's Rob's big a big food guy. Yeah, he's a big T-bone eater. Um, there, there's a question goes up. You know, people, uh, meat eaters or whatever, non-vegetarians would ask a vegetarian, where do you get your protein? Where, where does a cow get his protein? 
Or I are you asking me or what? His or her, actually. Yeah, her. Yeah, was, but uh, are you asking me? Or I don't have yeah. an answer. Yeah. Oh, you're asking me. I would well, it's, assume. Well, it's, it's an open question, but yeah, since it's me and you, I'm going to ask. I would, okay, well, I, I'm a one meal a day eater. I usually eat in the evening. And uh, I'm real I'm real underweight now. I should be a little heavier than I am. I'm probably down to 130. And I thought about it. and I'll probably have some bananas. I'm going to run for, you know, put up five pounds. Have some bananas and some bread every day with my one meal at night. And I, Cirque says I'm just not the kind that just, I don't gain, I don't gain weight like that. It just, no matter what, and I eat a lot of sugar and all that, but don't have any excess. I, I burn hard, it up. So I still consume more calories uh, than probably uh, that could sustain two, three hundred pound men, and that, that's that's not. Oh, I'm not like yeah, I'm real, way smaller than that. But to survive, if I wouldn't eat meat, I would say uh, fruits, vegetables, well, and a cow eats uh, grass. Well, I'm not eating grass, yeah, but but you couldn't eat grass. No, like I know a cow because you only got yeah. one stomach, but. Oh, that omnivores, the is, yeah. The uh, the high protein. Now, I used the high protein. I learned about this. It was a, uh, a burn center in uh, Israel, I think Jerusalem or wherever. Uh, and what they did, they was feeding uh, these burn victims like fifty egg yolks or something in a day. High, high protein. Then you've heard maybe of the Atkins diet. So when I came out here about fifteen years ago, I started out with that, and I was eating a. A uh, pound of bacon and a dozen eggs for breakfast, and and still to this day, I I mean I eat one meal all day, all day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, yeah. I eat all the just time. eat it all at once. I, no, I just keep eating all day. And, oh wow! And, I I don't know. Different strokes, yeah. different when, folks. When I went to driving a, a over the road in a truck, I went up to two hundred thirty pounds from uh, two hundred eight, which that's when I came out of prison at two hundred eight from one seventy six. And uh, do a handstand push up, knock a wall down. <laughs> but yeah, then, uh, yeah so you're older to, now. Calm down. Yeah, sport. And, and smaller too. I mean, I'm way less than what I did when I was 16 years old now. Yeah, well, that arthritis will get you from the inside out. You know, the the shit that works on us physically and mentally that we don't even know is there. We're distracted from that by the shit that they pretend is there, like this inoculation crap. You know, I, I, measles, here's a good one. I mean, Christ, when I was a kid, I was immune to measles without ever getting measles. I never got the fucking measles, right? I don't know that and, I ever did either. Okay, but about 10% of the children, it, this is a kid's disease. So if you get it as a kid, it's a couple of days to a week, 10 days maybe, and you're done. Or not. Kids ever no, die from measles? Very, very rare occasion. That, that'd be a sickly little fuck that doesn't play outside. Okay, so 10% of the people that get it might have an adverse reaction to it. So they're putting a whole 100% of this shit on 90% that don't need it. It's just that one fringe that reacts badly to the disease. But we all, you know, we were either exposed to it and didn't get it, or we are exposed to it and got it. And as a child, it builds your immune system. Now, if you don't get it as a child and you get it as an adult, that can kill you. I remember, it's not an adult, not an adult di- uh, in disease to get. I, I think there is some younger, uh, maybe teenagers or in their twenties, maybe get it. I'm not sure. Okay, the same like thing. Oh, fuck, it's a child. So I yeah. you, you're eight, nine, well, I, ten years I, I'm, old I'm when going you're developing. Completely non uh, knowing on this. I'm just trying. To yeah, but when you're 15, stuff. you're pretty much as developed. I mean, I've seen 15 year olds that look 20. So. Yeah. Hmm. That's not what I mean. What I mean, you get it when you're little, when you're still, you're still trying to figure out what hole you're peeing out of. Well, they're having a big uh, bunch of that going on up there in Washington. I think uh, it's around outside of Seattle. Yeah, they make a big deal. Thirty-five cases out of a you know a city of however many thousand or million, and they make a big fucking deal out of it because they don't want to tell you the truth about this shit. If they told you the truth, who'd listen? They go, oh, no, 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 this is wrong. But they lie and they miss, they, they cook the books. They do this unbelievable shit. And then when you talk about it, you sound like a nut. 
Yeah, I, I that's saw the way the industry and everything. The design just, of the game. Yeah, the whole of life is set up to, like we was talking about earlier, to uh, as a vampire system, suck you, suck the life out of you. I hear yeah, work a quick it. fact about mumps, so you know it's probably going to be propaganda. It says uh, adultvaccination.org. Uh, fact. <laughs> fact. Mumps is most contagious. Not from... mumps, measles. I was talking about measles. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Let's go and finish mumps, and I'll go to measles. So it's most contagious contagious from one to two days before uh before to five days after the onset of an infection in this uh salvator uh, uh salivary glands uh let's see one about two to three out of every 10 adolescent or adult men who have mumps may experience oh no Painful, swollen testes. I've never had mumps. Thanks. Adult men. Exactly. These are childhood diseases. Okay. So, but how I, many how many grown men actually are there that really associate with little kids that are going to be exposed to those kind of children d- diseases? Well, I wonder how many grown men got mumps. Uh, you know, prior to our present age of uh, uh, vaccines and the. Uh, Oh, what are they going to call the GMOs Vaccines. now? They're going to call them uh, 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 biofortified. That's what GMOs are going to be labeled as, biofortified. I think that was uh, Java Doctor that, or maybe Rob works. It sure that I've seen that. Pretty interesting. Yeah. So we, we have all this influence and then all the stuff that flat falls out of the sky. Now, uh, having a conversation with a uh, uh a person that works over here at Jacksonville Air, Air Force Base. You know, I tell you, the C-130Js fly over real low here. And I, I even flashed one night, flashed a flashlight at him uh, forward and then side to side. And um, yeah, he's probably about 500 foot up. And there's like there was like this big dome on the bottom of the plane, like a light, like a super floodlight. And so, you know, you've seen the ones where you turn on the switch and it takes a while. The power builds up before the light gets bright. So this is what I seen in this. He flipped it on and off because it looks like lit up that that low luminous uh, lighting there, like it was warming up to shine. But I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, so uh, my uh, friend's sister's girlfriend works at the uh, Jacksonville Air Force Base, and uh, so the, the conversation was passing in uh, chemtrails, and so I like to be able to uh, not use the word chemtrail with somebody, especially in that position and uh, circumstance that with the, oh, another. So I, I, I came across it like, uh, I said, so, you know, it's a, it's amazing how these, uh, the condensation trolls are, um, see these clouds. I said, I wonder what would happen if there were no planes in the sky. And you know what answer I got? What? Nothing. Cause she was afraid I was going to be a nutter, you know, thankfully I didn't say chemtrails, right? So yeah. Well, but well, let's say, I, for instance, that they're not doing chemtrails. Let's just say it's innocuous stuff coming out of the gas hole in that, uh, the planes up there. It's still doing things. The uh-huh. stuff's falling down. It's contaminating uh, <laughs> Everything. soil, water. Uh, yep. You're breathing. Uh, so what's the result? That we see Look the, around. We see the condensation forming these trails. And what, what causes clouds? They need to... Uh, this nucleation to occur they need to have dust particles up in the air or it's coming out of the gas hole on that plane up there so how are you going to tell me that that is not causing the weather well you can't see here we are you can't prove it you can't disprove it everything is all i think i you don't know anything there, there's no proof it's beyond it's beyond a group agreeing there's too many variables here. Nobody is going to agree is what I'm getting at. We're all going to come at it from a different side and go, you're wrong and you're wrong. And everybody's concerned about who's wrong. And very few people are concerned about what the fuck do we do to get out of this. And I have come up with a three-step plan that I guarantee will work. You have physical fucking improvement in six months. But there's six months to go without your cell phones and your your banking and your church and your car, all these shit, all this trapping, they, they, people don't want to give it up. Yeah. And we have, nice, so. we have all the technology available 
to improve everything that we're doing right now and bring it up to par. But what we don't have is the truth in print about what par is. We've just got a bunch of lawyers and doctors lying to us from Seats of Power. Well, I can give and, you a, relate something and, to you. People that make cars that run on water end up dead. Yeah, I know. Oh, believe me. Henry Ford's first fucking engine was designed to run on on hemp oil, not gasoline. Gasoline, they brought that in as a a cheap a cheap way to make quick money. This this oil thing was never for us. It replaced hemp. Hemp That's, would have been cheaper in the long run and less profit for the big guy. Let's say somebody had a car, uh, average gas mileage, uh, let's call it 20 miles to a gallon, and uh, lived here where I, I'm at and had to just go merely into Clinton, let, let alone if they had to drive Plum to Little Rock, which 80 miles and then traffic and uh, stop and go. But just say huh. 20 miles to Clinton from here in the mountains up, back down into town. Mm. 20 miles, you get 20 miles to a gallon. You go there and back five times a week. So, well, you got uh, two, da- that's uh, 10 gallons. Now, 10 gallons a week, how much, how many acres of cannabis or hemp do you suppose it would take to maintain one cer- one individual enough uh, petroleum to uh, go back and forth to work? I don't, have, I don't have, I don't, I don't have, I don't have gallons? that number. I have no idea. Yeah, Why don't so, you tell me? Well, I don't know. I, you if you look at the process of the crude oil and uh, cracking that off and, you know, all the separate stuff that comes out of the oil, and that's something I want to come back to. There are so many compounds in there. There's probably like every compound there is in, that exists on Earth inside this. Uh, and you know, that's where they pull these uh, compounds out of to make the pharmaceuticals. They, they, uh, they crack this, and then you get gasoline, uh, mm-hmm. and you get diesel. Diesel used to be a, you know, it costs more than gas now. It used to be something that uh, was the byproduct of making gasoline um, and now it costs more than gas but did you know that there's a big fucking problem down in mexico right now that has nothing to do with the border or americans or politics or any of that you want to know what it is i'll tell you if you ask uh is it that uh the uh, president is uh declared an end to the drug war Wrong essay. The answer is uh, people have figured out that there's ways to, to break into the pipelines that deliver the oil, yeah. make their own gas. Mm, huh. So they've been stealing the oil by digging underground and, you know, pl- and tapping into the existing gas lines, the gas delivery lines. Yeah. Well, that'd be and stealing it. Well, OK. Just a so what? Right, but what this government leader did was he shut the pipelines off so that the only way you can get gas in is uh, bring it in with trucks. Yeah. Well, that's 10 times slower. I mean, come on. Yeah. Take yeah, forever. More, yeah. Right, so the people now are, are suffering because there's a black market for stolen fuel. Have you ever watched I'm, any videos on uh, uh, wood gas? Mm-hmm. Having a, a wood stove in the back of your pickup truck? No, but I mean, Christ, they were using steam in the freaking 1800s to move a train. So come on. Yeah. This stuff is not new. Oh, hey, there's, uh, if, if they hadn't done to Tesla what they did to him, we wouldn't be sitting where we are now. This is a long range plan by a big group of people. I mean, oh, it wasn't yeah. a few people. This had a lot of hands in it to get us where we are now. And All they, right. Now, and they pa- passed the baton p- along the way in history. Too. Oh, yeah. Blame the neck, blame the guy before you. Every fucking president's always done. Oh, is this all the mess that Kennedy made me? I'm doing my best. No, he didn't do anything. None of these fucking politicians do anything. It's the people in the world that get outside and do shit. Not the the decision makers. Just talk. They're just telling you what to do, whether you do it or not. It's on you. And I think that's the big difference between a statist. And an anarchist is an anarchist will say, you want me to do what? Are you out of your fucking mind? And a status will say, yes, sir. Getting right on it, sir. And then half the time not even do it. Just tell you they did it. Hmm. Come on. You didn't know that. What is it? Uh, 10% of your workforce does 90% of your work. 
Yeah. And the rest of them are just hangers on, freeloading, doing shit wrong. Yeah, more, more so because it's more socialist right there. We're looking at, what, 60 some odd percent tax rate? Is that what y'all said? 57, I think. 57. Oh, look. Uh, yeah, but their wages are, their, see, their wages justify the, the taxes too. They don't pay them, they pay them enough money so that cutting it in half or better than half they still got a decent amount of money to live on it's not hurting them and the stuff that they pay for in taxes like medical and roads and all this other shit is actually there they see it they feel it it's it's real it's physical not promises oh we're gonna go bomb serious so that you're safe in bed tonight sport (laughs) there's people that believe north korea is gonna nuke america I bet there's a lot of North Koreans that would like to know what America is. Well, they're in fear I, of us. No, uh, here we're we go. All, in all right, all right. Yeah, and, and well, right, they wait, should wait. be. Look at our. Well, record. wait a minute. But wait a minute. What about the uneducated farmers that live outside of the the societies and live off the land and shit like that? Do you really think that everybody on the planet's educated to know America is what America thinks it is? Well, I'm going to say those uh, people in. Out there in the rice paddies, or um, yeah, you, you look at what all this turmoil has gone through over the last few decades. There, and, you know, Pol Pot and all these others in in China is brutal, and North Korea okay, is and, right. More, the probably one of the most brutal. These, you know, the intellectuals are killed. Uh, all they got to is, is generally, you know, the majority of these people out there, uh, they're little more than cattle in the field, and that's about what they're. And do you think that your average American that's all pro all this crap they're all for and understands they've been at war for 200 years? No. And they're the cause of 90% of all the fucking problems they around don't. the world. People don't. Is the American po- politicians inter- – I mean they send, they send these people into foreign countries. They killed South, South America years ago. They send these guys in. They make these, un- these debts that can never be paid off through fractional reserve banking practices and they get the approval of the upper echelon and then the the people that work for a living have to pay the bill that's what they're doing with their new puppet down in venezuela right and when the bill to the the international monetary funds and and uh, when the bill doesn't get paid then then they start calling you communist and you know we're going to come and fix everything well no they're the ones that fucked everything up but they lie they tell you this and they tell you that but if if you pick your ass up and you go to some of these places that they tell you to never go to, you find out they're all bullshit. They're lying to you. They don't even know what they're fucking talking about. Well, I'll tell you, there are some people that realize uh, completely and fully uh, the uh, empire and then the nation of America and would say that, you know, I'm good with that, you know, because uh, I'm American. And if somebody's got to be the, the big Big guy on the block, might as well be us. Okay, but, all right, let's use the Bundy thing. There's what happened, there's what was reported, and then there's what people think. And they've only got, you know, a few choices to listen to to understand what happened in the first place. And most of them don't know. I don't think a lot of people have the time or the interest to follow something that closely to understand what it is or Come on, look at the surroundings. Look where we're living. Yeah, because they're spending their all their time trying to provide for uh, food, clothing, and uh, yeah, it, yeah. How can you learn about life if you're busy surviving life? I mean, every uh, when when I go to the grocery, I like my evening walk to the store. And in the winter time, it's dark, and everybody's got their TV sets on, and their blinds are all open. It's a very open, you know. Uh, they're not all huddled in. Some houses are. I keep my drapes closed a lot of the time. But then there's a lot of people that don't. It's like 50-50. Uh, and you see TV sets on, and you know, but not a lot of internet action <laughs> is what I was getting at. I think, like here, most of the internet world is either working or they're playing games. And I don't think that they're ready here to go online and see how, what can we do to solve all these social problems that we have. Because they don't even know they got social problems. The better your society works for you as an individual, right? If you're getting what you want out of the society, then you think it works good and you participate in it. 
whether it's good or not is that's not that's for other people to worry about. I'm having a good time. I'm making my money. I'm doing this. I got to that. I got a two of these. I'm good. Me, 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 me. There you go. That's capitalism. Right. All right. And then they go. Socialism is where nobody does anything. And Well, no, 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 no. All these labels that they put on shit, it's all the same garbage. Doesn't matter what you call it. It's commerce. Commerce kills. And I heard somebody, I was listening to a, a link today about these two guys talking, and part of it, part of it was, uh, well, if nobody worked, da, 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 what would we all be doing? And the other guy was trying to explain to him that human nature is not to sit idle. Sitting idle is what creates most of the problems we have. Well, you Idle know, hands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nobody likes to be forced in anything, and a lot of people may not understand it intellectually, but in at their core inside that they know it's wrong, and, and a lot of people would then rebel, uh, call, be called the uh, rebel without a cause. You know, when, when you didn't know what it was, but you were rebelling, and you knew that there was something, right? It needed to be yeah, rebelled yeah. against, right? Mm. Yeah. Being told what to do for no damn good reason every twenty minutes really got up my nose. But you know, if you know, we like, were not robbed and raped and drug over the coals, um, we'd have all this extra that's that's uh, demanded and exacted from the majority of people in this world uh, to their utmost uh, to their life even. But if if people were free to uh, you know keep what they earned and not be be robbed like. It's simpler than that, Vinny. There would Vincent. be abundance. Hold on real quick. There would be yeah. abundance, right? I understand that. People yeah. would, uh, if somebody was in need and really had no ability, there would be like so many people like, well, here, man, I've got so much here, but, you know. That's not the way it is. The way it, hmm. people see, artists. what I'm saying. Where do you get billionaires and millionaires and trillionaires? It's, it's hmm. not by working. <laughs> And family, yeah. But but see, we're yo. What my money? And then what they do? Yo, you got my money. They they put a couple of celebrities and give them a few million dollars for making a movie, and then what they what the public doesn't seem to follow along with is all these people are all related. Their fathers were in films. Their their uncles were directors. Their go back for three or four generations. Yeah. Yeah. And most of them are horrible actors in the first place, but that's what the, that's what society brings us. And then these, these lion munch nuggets in fricking Hollywood give these ass wipes Academy awards for garbage movies. And what? There you go. You go against the grain, and people call you names. I don't like Mandela. Hey, there's something wrong with Lou. He doesn't like Mandela. Okay, what's wrong with me because I don't like somebody? You know? I never said there was anything wrong with him because he liked Mandela. I just said I don't. Yeah, there any kind be, of opposition. There would, there'd be a lot of people that see him as a, a champion to their cause and, and a hero. Um, Did they ever live in South Africa? <laughs> Probably well, not. Well, I'd be mostly Re- talking it. about. I got I got unfriended from somebody that uh, I think the world of uh, Alan down in uh, South Africa. He's uh, African, which means uh, you know I guess they'd consider him black there, but it's, you know he looks like a white guy that's that's brown. Looked like you know he could live in L.A. and you know you would never think anything about him if he was speaking in without. Uh, African dialect or a Spanish dialect. Yeah, it's a real unique voice, yeah. yeah. Well, but, of course, speak. he speaks uh, like a South African. Uh, but, but uh, it, you know, he, this conflict to this uh, this society and, uh, you know, the, the division. So about this Bundy thing, you know, people, well, ve- some of the, not the re- Christian, say, vegetarians, but the religious vegetarians, uh you know, see me as a betrayer to the animal and that, you know, biodiversity oh. and preservation. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. But see, it's all these separating, you separate in groups. Uh, I don't know. That's why I'm just against all of it. There's no point you know, to me, for me. I got my own little group, my cult. Hey, my cult numbers. I'm up to four members in my cult. Top that, motherfucker. <laughs> And it, a, how's that song go? A, a dog and a cat and a dealer and a something? A dog named Dan? <laughs> no, I got a wife and a dog and a cat. Yeah. 
But hey, it's better Cat than Cal- being all Kalamazoo. Is that how that goes? I could be all alone in my delusion and just think I'm, you know, I'm am the cult and all its members. <laughs> Well, see, I hear not and, that insane yet. When I was in the desert, I had me a little a pet fluffy desert rat, you know, and yeah. left her there when yeah. I left. And, but yeah. no mice in the house uh, here. I don't have a dog or a cat. I got a cat, but he lives like uh, uh, across the down the hall and back up the other, other side. I'll probably have to go get him back when uh, my friend's grandpa passes this world. I'll have to go rescue uh, Chairman Mao. But I don't have any uh. dogs, but I got dogs. I even buy them food because. Uh, well, my friends down there in winter time, and uh, they're not always responsible for the money, anyways. And that's another story. I had to teach him a little lesson a little while ago. Anyways, I feed his dog because I'm not going to let his dog go hungry, right? I mean, and he's my friend. That's Coca, and then the other dogs that they come to, so I feed them, and yeah, that works good for me. I wonder what's more important: feeding an animal or feeding a person? It's more important to feed. Uh, the one that is uh, unable to feed themselves. Uh, well, you mean there's no written rule? Which one has priority? They're all equal? Well, um, there would be the argument uh, for and against that. Uh, the uh, mm. I don't even have a good word for what to call it because I got a lot of friends that would see this, and I don't call them wrong. Uh, mm. Actually, we, we should strive for not even to kill an animal, right? Uh, True, I agree, you know, but I still, I understand Buddha, really. Okay, right, but I'm realistic, and I've killed the animal to eat the meat, so uh, I'm. You know, I know. I didn't like it until I did it. Then once I did it, I was like, "Hey, this is not good for me, man." I might might get mad at somebody and try them, so I stopped while I was ahead. Okay, well, I didn't think that would be. I, no, I like I, animals in. You know, I, yeah, so I do I. Country. I, I even I, like people. I've rode with horses long before I ever had a, a bike. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Man, I hated it. I, I moved to Tulsa, <laughs> and, and uh, my grandpa, he, he got me my first bike, one of them red ones with the hard tires. But I was riding in uh, mules, a jack or a jenny, a horse. Uh, little kid. I remember three years old, I was thinking about that. Uh, and then we, one of them times where, you know, all this displacement in life. I, I've got it naturally. I've been traveling ever since i was born but anyway so go to tulsa at three years old and we uh, moved there from arkansas if i end up back to arkansas a little later on but anyways so i remember three years old me and my brother and he see three, i he told you and you made you told me i was lying when no, I, told, I, I have a real no. big memory of no, no. when i was I about three a liar. i just i, no. just, okay. I was no. playing the contraster and trying to make sure you know what you're saying but, if I say it, I either did it or I know it. Yeah, I've been storytelling. You, you can't repeat the lie, so yeah. what? Fuck the lie. Lying's too much work. See, I'm like you and, though. In a but I've ways. told people, man, if I tell you what was really happened, you're going to think I'm making it up. So you sure you want to hear it? And they go, yeah, okay. And you see them roll their eyes. Yeah, well, I just was in London yesterday. No, you weren't. I okay. Bet, yeah. Well, here's my. I bet. Let me Show tell you me the quick. papers. I bet I can tell you something that you've been told before. Okay, I know you can. Go ahead. People say, there's no way you could have done all that. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But many you times. saying that, but I was trying to interrupt you many, so I could yeah. say it. <laughs> yeah, but many, many times. Yeah. Well, sure, because uh-huh. you've you. done it too, so you know from experience. That experience is uh, – I did a show about it where – if if a 20-year-old today was in the position I was in, say, when I was in my 20s financially, they wouldn't even think of, nor is it even legal to do the things that were available to me at 20 compared to today. I turned 21 on the run and uh, had a brand-new made-up name, and nobody knew where <laughs> I was at. My right, mama, and my today— mama, Some years later thought I was dead. She was just yeah. Like, wow. Try that now. You can't. Nah, no. You can't do it. We're all no. plugged into the fucking internet. Are you kidding me? How, where are you going to go? Yeah, that's you're, not on, you're online. There, there still exists that. Uh, like for me back then when I was on the run, I was uh, you know worked for cash. 
there's there's less and less cash jobs these days. Yeah, where are you going to do that now? That's what I was saying. Somebody 20 today could not do today what I did when I was 20. Not as easy. And it was – and it, not period. It was all – no, kidding me. You try to get a job unloading a truck from a driver now and see what happens. I bet they're not even allowed to talk to you or insurance Most problems. Most places, yeah, they're not going to let you be a lumper. Because, uh, I, I, yeah, I remember – yeah, you didn't. You didn't see any need to see any qualifications or paperwork. No, or, I'm a no. certified lumper. No, you, you can't unload the truck. You don't get paid, so you go unload the fucking truck. How hard is it? But the point is, is now they've got insurance and uh, mother state up the truck driver's ass, and oh, then yeah. they're paying them like they they pay them pretty good, but they they really fuck them. They fuck them now more than they did when in my day when they were picking hitchhikers up. You know, and a lot of it was, hey, you know, I got, they, they pick you up for somebody to bullshit with because they got a long drive to make. Yeah. You know, you travel 400 miles. I was driving. I never See? would drive yeah. for anybody that uh, had. Wouldn't no allow riders. No, I, yeah. No, that, well, you're not allowed to have them anyways, but uh, I, I didn't yeah. drive with anybody yeah, with a satellite that. or, uh, you know, I run a loose leaf log. I, I run some thousand time, mile days. That's, that's keeping the wheels turning right there. But it, in, in our time, it wasn't so important to uh, prove everything. People took you for your freaking word, you know. And now they got everything's got to be electronically uh, monitored and read and cataloged and uh, you name it, and they got to do it. So all I'm saying is things are tougher now for the for the guy that's growing up than they were for me, Definitely. and that's. What the guys my age, you know, now were saying about me when I was twenty, man, <clears throat> guys twenty to to thirty are still kids these days, right? And it, see the cycle that we're in, and you don't see the cycle until you get to this age in life, and and you have certain experience to look back and go, wow, it's just a rerun of another time and period, but with different toys to play with. I'll be but the pro five this year, dude. Okay, I'll be 60. Mm-hmm. But the problems are still the same. See? Yeah. Every generation, we, they're the same fucking problems we've always freaking had all along. It's just the technology gets better so they can deceive us more easily. You, you know, you said it easily. Yeah, but actually life is uh, uh, possible today because of the uh, the oil, uh, that cheap energy. <laughs> Uh, it's not cheap. It's well, killing us. Well, I mean, us. I understand that, but I'm the talking about relatively cheap. Let, hold on. Give me a second. Let me, let, let me run okay. with this a minute. Here. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> in 2017, the refineries in the United States produced an average of 20 gallons of motor gasoline and about 11 gallons of ultra-low sulfur distillate fuel oil, uh, most of which is uh, sold as diesel fuel and in several states as heating oil. So from one you know, a, a, a barrel of uh, oil, a, a drum, a 42-gallon barrel of crude oil is what you get, 20 gallons of gasoline. So um, about half. Now, you're needing 20 gallons a week to go back and forth to work. Um, so you're needing a gallon, I mean a, a barrel of oil. Now, how much, how much hemp would you have to uh, produce? Now, look back uh, at the... It, at Daniel Boone in the documentary I was watching, uh, he goes through a life. I mean, they work hard just just to be able to have food and shelter and clothing. Uh, everybody might suppose, oh, Daniel Boone wore a, a coonskin hat, but in fact, was uh, history says that uh, he despised fur hats and he liked to wear the big broad brim. You'll see the old history uh, pictures there with the big old brimmed hat. Wide brim. So there's a lot of myth and uh, about what it is in the day. Uh, people would would die regularly, freeze to death in the winter. What would have been happened to a lot of people up? Uh, would they have been more resilient and not been caught unaware if he was living up there and uh, getting down to 60 below zero? Would you die? What, what if hmm. you, uh, uh, let's go to a reservation in the Dakotas. Well, uh, uh, compare their life back uh, in the Plains days to, to now. Uh, you might suppose that they're uh, they're getting uh, fuel oil and, and uh, they're in a one of them cracker back jack uh, houses that they build on the reservations and um, 
how, how would they compare? What, uh, what were they burning before? There were less big number of people. They were burning uh, perhaps the buffalo dung. So is life easier today? Is it uh, allow for the huge population that we have? Yeah, absolutely. The food, now that's all been taken over and now used against people and actually, you know, to kill them and th- thin them out anyways, make it cheap, yeah. the food, yeah. everything. So, yeah. but, mm-hmm. but. How hard no, of a agree. life would it be if you had to go out there and gather all your food, either kill it or uh, dig it up, uh, cut all your fuel or dig all your coal or whatever means that you're going to use to stay warm with. Uh, of course, you're not going to have a mortgage payment, which is a big, the big scam today, uh, and other things like insurance. you got all these uh, um, expenditures just to maintain and occupy yourself while you traverse through this uh, system in life, right? Mm-hmm. So how will you compare it? I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you. Well, I don't have the numbers either to work I with. Either. All I have is common sense, yeah. okay? And I, I think it, it's so wasteful to use the fuel to get the fuel to where the fuel is going, on, just on top of everything else. The way we waste so much fuel, getting fuel to the person that wants it. So... Hmm. Does it really matter how much hemp it takes to replace that? If if hemp is in fact what everything that they've said it's not all these years, and it is the cure all that I feel it is, nothing could go wrong, except that you'd go without a car until you could see. That's what I mean. Society is all based on fucking money instead of what's good for me. We got trillions of dollars. But 10 people want to trade it amongst themselves like it's a fucking Monopoly game while the rest of us have to live in it. So, you know, that's why I get all pissed off when people think Donald Trump's some great fucking guy. No, if you look up to wealthy people and think they're successful because they did anything, boy, you're you got some learning to do. That's my opinion. Rob, here's and, the uh, quick link right here. Sorry. That, uh, he's, yeah, you hear about the 55 gallon drum, but. Uh, oil is measured in 42 gallons. It's just like if you're measuring uh, uh, gold, an ounce of gold is, is mm-hmm. not the, and in silver, you know, it's not like uh, 16 ounces of uh, silver doesn't make a pound. Uh, I forget the numbers on that, too. But. They do it in troy ounces, yeah, right? Uh, Whatever a troy it's, ounce, then it's a different weight for the ounce than, say, a liquid ounce. Yes, or uh, not, what would it be? Metal I ounce? it's uh, 30, uh, 30, uh, grams 30 grams or grains to uh, ounce yeah grams right 30 grams not 28 10 ounce mm-hmm. silver so you got 28 grams in an ounce is an ounce yeah, yeah. but in silver but, it's 30 oh ounce. okay i see what you say. that's what i mean it's they call it a troy that's the, all these word games that they play with right. us man uh-huh. we're so beyond screwed i was trying to start the show out with that is we get taught these ideas and they sound good and everybody else knows what you're talking about and 20 years go go by and you go there's no way that oswald could have shot kennedy from the forehead you stupid idiot <laughs> what are you talking about see because everybody knows what they saw but they know what they were told to believe and if you're the one that's talking against what people were told to believe, you end up at the dork table with me talking about it. You know, that's that Mandela effect, right, you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Just know. Yeah. They just know. And, and I've uh, uh, seen that, you know, in my own case. Uh, you know, I was like, wow. Because I had to go look at myself right there. I said 42 gallons for a barrel of oil, and Rob said 55 but I remember some time back that uh, I was like, what do you mean it's not 55 gallons, it's only 42? You know, we're getting ripped off here, right? Mm-hmm. It's, that's a quite a, what, it's 12 gallons, right? Or 13? Yeah, 13. Can you do the math? <laughs> but still, that? it's still a, a deficit when you look at it. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean, is we're all, whatever we're told, however we're living today right now, and the reason things are working so badly is the result of being lied to. Nothing else can. Nothing else explains it. Okay, and if you go into the history and you like, uh, there's that guy in what's his Montana. Uh, let me open. Let me. Uh, if I open up my thing, then it'll beep again. Hmm. Well, anyway, Cowboy Tech put put up a link on RealLiberty.org earlier today. There's it. a 
there's a guy that lives on the land, and he had some uh, court problems. They arrested him for fishing, and anyway, that turned into court appearances, and then he got uh, charges for, uh, what was it, assault and uh, contempt of court. He did like 30 days or something total, three charges, but... He's so freaking smart. He's got this shit memorized in his head, all the freaking laws. Which law goes to what law, which goes to which court. He knows which magistrate's not really a judge. This guy knows his shit. And he's still alive. So let's see how long that goes on. But Cowboy put Tech put a um, link on it. And uh, wow, the guy is real good. Because some people have that knack, you know. They can understand how this make-believe game if you explain it in this fancy way well this is well, what will make sense and i'm like that little kid in charlie brown all i hear is wah 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 just hmm. a bunch of drivel fucking noise right so when i got interested in finding out well what the hell is the admiralty court and what are the components of it i tripped over a guy that had a, an amazing explanation for how legal Lee's is written and he worked out perfect it worked it out into a math equation that i can understand because now i'm not a mathematician or any of that shit but i lean towards if it makes sense with math whoa i can see that uh, other people that they have different uh ways of looking at something to be convinced it's true i like to go with the numbers numbers balance uh things that are mathematically sound like your question about how many acres of hemp is it going to pro- is going to produce how many gallons of necessary fuel? Well, here's something else we didn't think about. You ready for this? Okay. Make a good fucking carburetor. Well, that's that, true, right? You get 300 miles could, to a gallon. You could do that now with the carburetors they have. Sure. They they limit this shit so that you got to uh, you have to do their game. It's a fucking scam. We're being fucked from every possible angle by everybody that's involved making what they call profit so they can control us. Yeah. You didn't allow yourself to be backed in a corner with that question. Um, Ammon Bundy said uh, last week, he said, uh, uh, he, whoever asked the question first wins. I tried to do a search on that and I didn't get anything good. It took it back to some Bible quote, but anyways, uh, that's how it works in court. That's how it works with these. uh, Well, I've, talked about yesterday that long thread she kept asking the question asking the question until finally she got me with a question that um you know is actually irrelevant because it doesn't matter if it's the bundy ranch uh, melon farm of 160 acres is in a trust that's just smart because it needs to be passed on down uh to the family members as they come along and not be taken and stolen this you know by the state so and he obviously has been grazing yeah. cattle. So, I mean, they just yeah. didn't magically have rights and then magically not have the rights, the ownership of property. So that's that's what's being taken on is that property. But it's good that uh, that you did make that point, Flash, because that, um, that is part of it. Ah. But the chattel, the chattel is always going to fall for the government official story. The government said so. Well, every fucking thing the government says turns out to be a lie. You got your FBI fighting with the goddamn president right now while we're sitting here. You got internal fucking problems in your own government that supersede any problems anybody's got all over anywhere besides, you know, that it affects. Well, we're lying. I'm so tongue twisted with this one. If Donald Trump was so fucking important and what he did mattered, why would things work so badly? It's right on schedule. Everything that's happening to us in a positive or a negative, however you see it, is right on schedule. You're being taken on a trip. You don't pick anything. You don't choose anything. You do what you are allowed to do through society. Or you live on a mountain and eat you know, berries and fight bears for toilet paper see like exactly for me i uh my existence i i can uh, exist outside of any confrontation with any of these entities or when i do go uh like uh, going to the trial and going to denver and so forth that uh there's interactions and 
not I, I don't have to know all these laws. All I got to really mm-hmm. know is some good common mm-hmm. sense. And, mm-hmm. and a lot of people say, oh, you're surrendering rights. Well, if, if you're surrendering, uh, if you're proclaiming civil rights, you've lost natural li- uh, rights, first of all. But you want to, in the end of the day, you want to you wanna walk away and nobody's been hurt. Nobody's been killed and not been arrested, right? So I dealt with all these law enforcement and feds and FBI that, that I dealt with. Uh, and I, I thought, you know, the best thing to do is just hang this uh, cardboard sign around my neck, make sure there's no mistake, no uh, misunderstanding. And I don't care who, you, if you know my name, because I'm, uh, all you got to do is just go over and listen to me a minute or, you know, see the, the, the public uh, information that, uh, you know, it's providing. So that was my thing. But, you know, they beat the, uh, um, dang it, Kelly. <clears throat> I'm blanked again. Sorry. Kelly. Mm, uh, I've been there. Yeah, I forgot his last name for a minute. Anyways, uh, yeah, so they were busted him and uh, another guy. They've been doing this media there in Vegas, Cop Watch, Cop Block, for uh, uh, seven years. I met him when I was out there, and then and, uh, I met him with uh, Larkin Rose, too, there in, I believe that was, was that in 2014, I think, the same year. Knew you might name been, dropping, uh, motherfucker. Might, might have been a year later. I, all the time runs together. But anyways, so this guy, they arrest him. He's been going to these uh, um, public information things in uh, uh, PR and propaganda and all that by the sheriff's department, you know, and all the cop killings that, that happen out or the, the, the murder by cops. They shot a guy with a cane. He was like 65 foot away from anybody and pow, pow, wow. pow. Um, wow. So Fruit. they've kicked these guys out. They said, you can't be in here because you're not, your press pass isn't real. And of course it's real. Uh, here's, here's one of mine right here. Uh, what does it say right there? Is that real? Well, it's paper inside <laughs> plastic. It, it's a lot more flimsy and it's ba- bigger than uh, most press passes, but I thought it was a good size. That that way you don't have to get up in my face to read it. It's very clear. You can see it from a long yeah. ways away. I bet yeah. I bet with good eyes you could even make out at 65 foot away that that says, uh, hey, don't shoot. <laughs> but I'm going to put my hands in there. I'm going to keep my hands in plain sight if I get pulled over. Uh, I'm not going to be a smart ass to him. Uh, I'm going to ask some questions, though, but I want to be able to try to ask them in a right way. I don't want to be like Gavin Syme and have to run off to Mexico. I don't want to go live in Mexico. I might, but I wouldn't have to be want to be in exile. You know, I might want to come home one day. So, and if you, know, you did, you'd probably you'd probably be more comfortable down there than you are where you are at. No, I think I'd be much. I, I you think like? I, I think I would. Yeah, I've thought about it many times. Do you Even, like the cold? No, I would like to. Well, no, then you'd be more comfortable down in the south then. (laughs) It would be more expensive in in the long run. No, 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 no. no. There's a lot of requirements that uh, you need to adhere to to be able to do that. First of all, you've got to leave every so often. You've got to have money transferred. Uh, There's uh, fees in that. Uh, Then, you know, all your your requirements of life there. So I couldn't couldn't go down there and buy a place or... uh, there's a million Americans living illegal in Mexico right now while we speak. Mm-hmm. So no, there's ways. There's all you got to pay for government. It, so oh, fuck. That's what money's for. Go get some. It's not impossible to get. Uh, I'm happy with Jesus you know, spending, Christ spending my money like I, I do right here. Well, me too. I'm not. Well, we're not the ones that are constantly complaining about where we live either. Uh-huh. I, me and you are two people that are, seem. And few a few others seem pretty happy where we live, and we're the minority. We're the ones that hey, shut up! You're not complaining enough. You're supposed to hate life like I do, man. What's wrong with you? Hmm. Water, water seeks its own level, Vinny. It really does. You know, that's how that's how I ended up married to Circle. Because even though our personalities are worlds freaking apart. The core people inside us that other people don't know, those are the same. But you know what? You and Cirque and myself and I'd say some others, we have that same inner spirit that's that's akin to one another. 
Yeah, water seeks. So that's what that means, because you know, no matter what you do with it, it's always going to go where it it takes itself. It and it's got memory. And I mean, water is an incredible thing. It's way more to water than we were taught in school about water. I had to find out on the internet when I'm fifty fucking years old, fifty five. Amazing quality. And, start, huh? and yeah, all these all these answers to small problems, right? Gardening, for one. If you got a problem with space doing gardening, there are fifty fucking links on the internet to show you how to build an aquaponic uh, gravity feed system out of PVC pipe and a little bit of wood. I mean, even if you did it crooked, it couldn't come out so bad that it wouldn't work. We've got so much information today that we can go on and watch a YouTube video (laughs) of somebody that spent 300 hours assembling some uh, construction. And he said, oh, look, that's a little crooked right there. What an idiot, you know, because there's (laughs) there's a a hundred other guys over there that they didn't have a little bit of crooked spot on theirs. That is so much better. But no, they're kind of stretching out. But there is so much information in. Uh, there is. You can learn anything, but there's a lot of bullshit out there too. Right. So mentally, if, able to strike. It right. Well, how do you know? Because I think the computer is geared. It takes all this personal information off your damn. Uh, what's that? Facebook and Twitter and all the shit that you that you like and don't like and the crap you do on the internet goes. Yeah. It, they set up a thing to send you to certain information. D-base, yeah. Okay. I opened up a new browser on my computer, on my Windows computer, a Avast browser. The Firefox browser will take me to one site, and if I type the same exact word into the Avast browser, it takes me to a different site. Well, wow, isn't that interesting? And some of it's in Danish, but not all of it. So I thought, Man, there's so – not that I'm understanding any of this. I'm talking about it. The, and I'm saying is there's so much more to what's going on on the Internet than I can comprehend and explain to somebody else. Because if you just tell them, hey, you know, people are fucking with our information, that's not enough. They need more. They want details. They want explanations and who and what and where and why and how. And not stop it. Stop it never comes up because if you stop something, you have to give it up. And that is a human strength and character that we're not tied as a strength and character is to willingly walk away from something that is not good for you. You need to let it go. And sometimes you're wrong. You just got pissed off. Like me and you had a little spat. I did my way. I went, I'm going to go sit in the corner and think about it for a while before I say something that I can't ever take back. You know, because I, I wasn't, I yeah, I wasn't, quit. You know, that, well, yeah, but yeah. I, it wasn't the taking it seriously personal thing. It was that you were doing it at all. It was it just didn't fit. It wasn't about you. It was about what happened. That's why we're back doing this because we're, we're capable of uh, communicating. I don't do this well with many people. Most people don't, they want it their way, period. And I just want whatever's right for everybody. You know, so if, if ending the partnership on the radio would have been the right thing to do, that's what we would have done. But obviously, it was just you push things a little too far playing around, and I got a little upset about it and said, no, 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 we don't want to do that. I was actually I using an yeah. imitation of a, a character of somebody that I, that I know was from my whole life. Was, yeah, listen, I, I know. Listen. So, yeah, I know. And then my brother, he's he's picked it. It comes from my uncle. He was a senior master sergeant in the in the Air Force, so uh, you imagine the uh, the authority uh, in that uh, situation, and uh, so I stayed uh, stayed a summer. Well, with my uncle. I'm also one to think there's a little bit of truth behind every sarcasm. Yeah, that's so, true. But yeah, but I, where I mean, is the I'm truth? Not, I'm not trying to to fight with you, hash it up. But no, 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 no. I don't, I, I'm not doing I, that either. I'm just, we're talking came, about it, and they yeah. built, and and I seen that. Like I said, I had to go take a serious look because that. That really, uh, that messed me up, dude. I was like, man, what? I mean, so I told him to shut up. Uh, yeah. It well, doesn't mean I... we can't be friends. Friends can tell you to <laughs> shut up. My, my friend down here, his old yeah. lady, I told her a while back, uh, uh, well, she told me something. I said, yeah, fair enough. And she says, look, 
uh, you you call me a bitch and uh, I said you know that's because we're friends I, I can tell you when you're being a bitch all right so that's mm-hmm. just that's just the way I am right and, right. and I and I did put it into play off into character and stuff and but there, there was the the, the the buffer in there we were we were not <laughs> vibrating we were, we were we were buzzing the wrong frequency and yeah we that's were going in our own direction and yeah uh, so I got something well, for you. I, I've got something that, that, uh, yeah. that you set me on that I've been thinking about anyway. It's a long time. Uh, you know the Sterling engine. Uh, a lot of people probably see them that uh, they'd sit on a wood stove or sit on a on a desk. Just a little old thing that pumps up and down or spins a, a wheel, a fan, right? A little small, like a toy uh, thing, generally a novelty. But the Sterling engine was uh, invented... Uh, I believe if I remember the story right, uh, it might have been his dad was killed in a, a steam engine accident. Steam, very, wow. very yeah. dangerous. Now, the Sterling, yeah. it just works on the displacement between hot and cold. So you'd imagine a uh, a cylinder like, well, it would be much more exaggerated than the, the, the cylinder in an engine in your car. Uh, but between a, a cold source and a heat source, um, you know, it would move back and forth. That's, you can look up and see how Sterling works. But look at, just say, where you got a constant source of uh, a hot and a cold. Water's cold, and half the time you've got hot sun when they're not dimming it out. But imagine if you have <laughs> uh, a big uh, Fresnel lenses. Huge, huge, huge. The Fresnel lens you'll find on some of the old big screen TVs, and they're like a a mega uh, magnifying glass amazing you can melt uh, with with the television lens you can melt the you know steel with a padlock into a puddle but anyway so if you've got a huge one right you're on the ocean so you got this big old pipe goes out in the ocean and you got this uh, uh, big old system of where this uh, you're heating all this up there with them big huge areas and heating the voice I mean the voice uh, Vinny can you bring your voice more forward all right, that's way more for it. Yeah. All right, so you heat up the land there or whatever you'd use for your mass to hold the heat. And that would maintain overnight even when the sun's not. And then so the cold water in the ocean, this would go shh, 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 back and forth. And look how many miles of ocean you got. You could power the world off the, you know, a few miles of coast probably. Oh, I've seen those little um, wave machines. Yeah. But I'd still say, uh, I, I want to go back to that idea I was talking about with the carburetor. All right. Now, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not an engineer. But what I do have, the only thing that I claim is common sense, right? And I think that if the system really wanted us to be comfortable, they would design a, a, they would design a carburetor that would get 100 miles to a gallon. But you'll have so many people that don't know fuck all about how this stuff is designed and how it works to do this and that and the other thing. They'll say, you can't do that. Well, most people it's won't even know that, that gasoline doesn't burn. It's the vapor. It has to be vaporized. So the mere fact of uh, preheating your fuel uh, before going into your ejectors or even into uh, the old <laughs> spark plug system. Uh, See? There's a homemade little old device. You can hit, run it uh, on your manifold, heat your fuel. But it, and you can increase your gas mileage, uh, I don't know how many fold, that just by that method alone. Exactly. So what I'm saying is the components that go Thank into you, making the modern-day car are designed to get the worst possible uh, results out of the machine that it can get, but still fall within the guidelines of the fucking EPA. And that's a joke, too. That's but, a, They're the enemy. Anybody that's I know got, that. That got an alphabet uh, anagram. Jeez. They're the enemy. Please. FBI, CIA. Man, those are some evil people. And Anything connected to government at any level, local, state, federal, anywhere on the fucking planet. It's a commerce club, man. They want your money. It's all a club. That's all it's about. Get elected and become one of the members that makes the profit off all the rest of the people that do all the work. Okay. Politicians do fucking nothing. Sit around on their ass talking about shit when the, the 
the re- the answers to the problems that we have will never be addressed. They just want to continue the fight. Okay. Hey, I've uh, this is a really what are you doing? My computer's come on. Uh oh. Are you, you having? Shut up! To... What's going on? Yeah. Shut like, up. Man, I hate this Windows Ten. I okay. Do not like. Uh, but listen, let me I guess my here. question this is, didn't go anywhere. Well, I got distracted. Sorry. Hold on. I, this is really relevant. <laughs> this is really relevant. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll um, get to it. Because when we were in court in Denver, uh, Brand Thornton yeah. and I for Bruce Doucette, the uh, FBI uh, agent there, the special agent in charge, uh, uh, Ryan English. Yeah, he was in the courtroom next to the prosecutor, and he was also the in charge of the um, the investigation. And so now he's. Uh, I forget his exact name. He called himself a, it's like a special advisory witness. And he gets up to testify before Bruce is, a, you know, get up for his. And he's all like, yeah, we're going to. And, and then so Bruce gets up there and says, yum, 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 and they go like, he already said you're an idiot. Right. And then the judge will say, you can't say that. Uh, that's just, this is how this works in the courtroom. Let me find this. It ought to stand out because yeah, I clicked on it. But this guy, I shared this post. Uh, uh, Ryan English said that um, that the because it was asked, "Are you a corporation?" The FBI, and and they are. They exist as a corporation. But Ryan English, he says, uh, "Well, no, I mean yeah, we're a, uh, we're a corporation, but we're not a corporate. It's just a name that we use because that's how uh, we do this." And so then. Doucette gets up and he says, uh, "These guys, they're de facto, right? Uh, they're they're not legal. They're they're not part of the government. They are separate, completely. And you look at all of them, these uh, uh, agencies. They have this power, and then it's, it's corrupted. We're supposed to have separation of powers. It's been corrupted. Uh, the whole of the system is is filled." Say so drain the swamp, but drain the swamp. What are you going to do? You just got uh, made it easier for them big old uh, gators to get down to uh, catch your rabbit and everything else out there. They, he ain't done yeah. nothing. I wish I could find this because it. Uh, I I'll hand you the mic and I'll be able to go look for it. This is important though. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I was just reading my notes here when you said that, and it, I got a note from a a link. I don't know if I wrote it down correctly, but I'm going to read what I wrote. And it's regarding jurisdiction. So it's a legal thing. Right. It says, you can't grant the Fed what they have already taken regarding jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is not something that is taken. So if they've taken it from you, you can't grant it to them. You, it's something you grant. It's not something you take. That's the the point of that I get out of this, but other people might interpret it differently. See, and I think jurisdiction is when they take it, you can't give it back. You can't give it to them. They've already taken it, so it doesn't matter what you think. That's a hijacking of the fucking word from the get go. Absolutely. But here we are, uneducated, you know, hillbilly and the the pothead in Denmark. And we're expected to make sense and understand and f- go along with all this bullshit. And then the minute that you tell anybody else, hey, you know, this is a bunch of bullshit, you end up at the dark table talking about bullshit. <laughs> so here we Ooh. sit, you know. I know. I found it. <clears throat> now. Okay, what'd you find? See, this is going to require... Uh, looking into a little deeper. Uh, but this is uh, to do with uh, what uh, Ryan English and Bruce Doucette was trying to, uh, one was trying to establish and the other one was trying to play off. The United States branches of government have uh, corporate ID numbers on Dunn and Bradstreet. I think I got this from yeah. Java Doctor, yeah. actually. Yeah. Ah. And uh, are traded on the market. Because the United States is a corporation acting like a legitimate government. Now, it right. goes on. There's a long list. The, the DOD, the DOJ, uh, HHS, uh, Kiss My Ass, and uh, all the rest of them agencies. But the important part is down here in the comments. And uh, 
very important too. So this guy, uh, Larry Boyd, says uh, this is the kind of thing so-called, so-called, and I'm glad to use that so-called sovereign citizens get into. That is exactly right. This is uh, can be a dangerous path because, uh, as you were saying, uh, you don't, you've not given it. They've taken it already, right? Taking that right, right into so it. So you, you can't give it to them. You can't grant them. They already stole it. So it doesn't matter what you fucking think. Your input is useless. And what what kind of – how is that legal and lawful and fair if you're already stepping in and you're told to shut the fuck up and sit down? That's Nobody wants do. to hear it. Yeah. I know that. I, I've been through it. But I'm just saying your average joke. Your Hansel. <laughs> your Hansel's never seen what we've seen. Yep. Telling you that. Talk's a big game, but man, it just get it kind of upsets me so much because there's so many innocent people like him out there, like that woman that got busted for um, having cotton candy tests oh, positive God. on one of those freaking stupid uh, yeah. police things, and this is what they use shit that doesn't work. And in thirty days, ninety days, she didn't because they couldn't afford to bond out. I, I'll for, bet you that. I bet you that the test makes the uh, the fluid would turn like blue, and I'd bet I don't you, know. I bet you the cotton candy was blue cotton candy. Probably oh, it's turning yeah. blue. But you what know, are we in a do? Past, let's kick her. This, and well, my complaint is these are the idiots that you have in charge out there. They don't even know what a drug is. They don't even have equipment to properly test it. They're testing candy. What if that would have been an eighteen year old girl? It wouldn't have been any different. No, it's just they don't care about the person. They're looking for a crime that you did. Well, they know what drug is when they drug your ass down there to jailhouse, boy. Put some boots they, to you. All right. Let me uh, let me finish this corporation what? bit right here, real quick. Oh, okay. This is this is uh because I'm telling you, this is getting people in a lot of trouble, and and it's very apropos. You called it mine when you was talking about that. They take you. You don't have to yeah, give it up. Yeah. So. No. This is this is I say here and respond to Larry Boyd that uh, this is exactly what was talked about in Bruce Doucette's uh, trial that uh, Brandon and I uh, had went to there in Denver. Now another guy says uh, Larry Yates. He says uh, Dunn and Bradstreet is not the same thing as the stock market. Um, it is a, it is a rating service that yeah, looks, it's a rating, credit yeah, rating that looks at financial behavior and the government does have financial behavior um yes the federal government obeys corporations but it is not literally one of them it is it's a octopus it's it is in fact these are the if it don't matter if they're say they're not a corporation it doesn't matter they're still got all these these powers that are unchecked um right and it doesn't matter how they display their behavior there like through the Admiralty Court flag, if it wasn't there, they'd still be the Admiralty Court. You just wouldn't have the flag to identify. Yeah, that a judge so, took the fringes off a flag for a guy because he had a problem with that. Mm-hmm. But when you tell people, hey, th- that flag, it's identifying this to you. you. What you're doing is bad for you. And then, then the defense to that now is, well, it doesn't matter what flag they fly. Well, that's all good and fucking well, but they're still going to put you through the Admiralty okay. Court procedures under their rules, and you don't even know what those rules are. Right. So, wait it's not about minute. justice, I'm going to guarantee you that. Yeah, I, I went through uh, up here. They've actually shut that little town down from writing tickets. They were uh, The feds got on them for uh, what well, they call them, speed traps. They got a, oh, a legal yeah. name for that. But anyways. Really? Um, yeah, so I had a ticket there that uh, I said, uh, I'm not going to pay it. And uh, I said, uh, I'll just have to set it out. And the first judge, I'm not inclined. Well, first it started out that the uh, the uh, city attorney, see, he's, that's doing the prosecuting and these little uh, little court things that they got going on. But anyways, the, they're at a city level. What are you, incorporated? Towns are incorporated. So are you going to say, oh, they're not a corporation? Well, they, they are. But all these corporations uh, just web together. It, it is uh, one connects to another, and one could be cut off, and it doesn't even matter. I mean, it just continues, and it's populated by these people that, uh, like you like to call them, is uh, order takers. Well, look at 9-11, right? The, the Twin Towers both in one day fell, right? And tons of financial activity out of those two buildings. And you know what happened to the financial business that day? 
Nothing, it continued like nothing happened. So, you know what that told me? What? It's all made up any fucking way. They're talking trillions. Of, this thing is so unaccountable. It's beyond fucking fixing. They, oh. They'll never fix it. And there's so many followers, it's beyond replacement. So the only thing left is either you play in it or you avoid it. And avoiding it as much as possible seems to be where all the happy people are. <laughs> then there's those that you know, uh, that go stand right right in the gap, and uh, they're they're the ones that are taking the flag. You know, I wonder will they? Uh, so they have by the sixth of uh, February to get this filing in on the appeal. Uh, on the uh, dismissal on the Bundys. But, yeah. Uh, what's going to happen the next time? You know, the, just, oh, it's like going to continue. Said, it ain't over. It ain't over. No, the government has too many fucking people convinced that the government can do no wrong. That's the whole problem here is government has support from people. If you didn't support it, all these problems that we have would disappear. And your local area would replace it with something that was fucking smart because – we're forced to live like this. This isn't a choice. This is voters telling you what to fucking do. Well, when you, when you that's gotta, the part we leave out in all this freedom bullshit is no, you're just at the will of the majority, whatever the fucking majority is. You know, there's nine a, nine relics in Washington D.C. that call themselves scrotum. The, the, that's your fucking leaders. Oh, that's a big history about that about people losing their mind and stuff, uh, and they just leave them in there. It's like. <laughs> Life, lifetime position mm -hmm. you don't retire from the SCOTUS no 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 and the way it operates and the, the rulings that they've given that shows you how fucked up we are that as a collective we'll accept this crap that these fucking relics tell you like my least favorite one that I found was the one about the police have no duty to protect you no duty at all it's up to their discretion yeah it, uh, I've got to say though, I'm blessed where I'm at here. Um, I know the the new sheriff, knew the old sheriff, uh, uh, the new sheriff Lucas. We we're actually first hand friends. We worked together and worked cattle and built fence. Uh, and, and in a lot of ways, that ain't that good. But there there is a mentality, you know. You're uh, if you're not a good person, then you're not going to have a good experience with the cops out here. But You've seen some of the stuff I do. I, I might I've get a little seen a lot, a little bit. But, I don't know. But, I've seen a lot of people that were nastier than me not have problems with the cops. It depends on where you so, are. Well, and your I mean, I've, been there, yeah, I've been away a long time, but I don't know. I don't remember the cops being so so gun happy. and I saw it coming. I mean, I saw the change over the years, but I didn't think it was going to ever get to where it's at now. Well, look at, I, uh, look at your hair right now. It used to be a stigma. That would definitely get you jacked up by the police, but now, uh, long hair is the norm, right? No, I'm kind of the oddball here. Well, there, but here in America, then let's say I don't know. I haven't been home in seven and a half since 2011. September of 2011, I left. I left uh, North Carolina. So yeah, it's been a while. I had you know, Wesley what? Potts, the chief investigator, here a few years ago. I mean, well, we fished and drank beer, whatnot. Uh, he, he says, uh, he says, what you got a, hair, a cop haircut for? One time he says, I think you're a spy. <laughs> uh, I'm an well, observer. I am. I see how it works. You know, they're good guys, right? I know them, they're friends. But they don't really, they're missing that infiltration. Maybe they're not. Maybe they see how the feds snuck in. Uh, they they've got their foothold in with that dare and with the uh, um, domestic abuse units. So they gave them like I think four cars, and then they had uh, uh, to continue uh, being enrolled in this program and then shelling out money. So uh, and then well, after that comes the uh, the drug cops, and then mm -hmm. they go get people that are. Uh, drug addicts and abusers that uh you know they're selling uh, dope to uh, maintain their habit uh, in hot springs <laughs> yeah. arkansas they actually it was called uh, uh uh operation eight ball the one here local in shirley and uh was called uh <laughs> operation ice storm very original right i think it mm -hmm. was in the winter so maybe it was appropriate i was gone i guess uh 
people I know was on the uh, documentary. Went on to uh, um, on to uh, HBO, I think it was. I saw a link today about undercover cops pretending to be drug dealers, and the cops, the under other undercops, were pretending to be drug addicts, and then they they clashed and didn't know the other. Nobody knew they were cops except the the cops themselves. You know, hmm. so the, <laughs> that was a big clusterfuck. <laughs> Just like, and then they, uh, I guess in Houston, it might have been yesterday or today. The cops raided the uh, a house supposedly heroin addicts, and but what they didn't say that you had to read the the whole link was they sent in plainclothes detectives to serve a warrant on an, a couple that was supposedly suspected of heroin trafficking, and according to their their neighbors and friends that that's a bunch of crap. Mm-hmm. But that's the story they gave. The ones in and four cops, yeah, yeah, four shot, cops get shot. The, yeah, there's a no knock warrant and. Um, uh, no knock warrant. Yeah, what the, the fuck guy is shot wrong for with the cops, idiots. and then they killed his wife and and yeah, his the, dog, I believe. If they're not okay, and if the system is not encouraging this shit to happen the way it's happening, why did they do it that way? Right. You know, it's just so obvious that they want blood, or they would get you at the grocery store. You know, when you're in the checkout line. <laughs> you I, know, uh, think I talked smart. about that yesterday. when you're pumping your gas or something. What? Uh, I spoke about that yesterday on um, broadcast about the uh, the no knock warrants and how how cops can come inside your house. There's the um, by a warrant uh, by um, well I'd have to go look at it. Hold on, I'm bringing something over here to chat. Talking about police, I got you a picture right here. Can you go into chat. I'm typing. Right. Yeah, I see that. Okay, so I'll go over to. Uh, RLO, realliberty.org. Not that one, the other one. Where you at? There you are. Oh, hey, I want to I wanna, uh, address Moose because I, I know how it sounds, okay. but there's a lot of things I don't tell people that if they if they knew what I did when I did it, they would have thought I was completely insane because uh, I, I was at the, the end of a 10-year relationship before I we, – we, well, anyway, this is before I met Circle. And I tried. To, we tried to carry it over into the uh, to the Scotland thing, and that didn't. It just ended up as bigger problem. So instead of fighting and uh, for all the shit that I'd worked for for ten years, I just walked away from all of it. And said, "Have it. You have it. It's yours. Enjoy your life." I've done Bye. it. Yep, I've done it. Well, not a lot of people are willing to make the sacrifice of giving up everything they got. And just going forward and saying, well, <clears throat> fuck it. It didn't work out. And I'm not a vindictive prick. I don't see okay, the so reason let's, to be let's talk I mean, uh, taking a woman to court to fight over finances when you didn't get along. That's Give her the shit and leave. Go somewhere else. You're the man. You can do it. That's the way I think. I think as a man, and I, I got a bunch of shit from Chloe today because I'm short. <laughs> but as a man, I'll tell you this. I don't. I don't take no as a a big. It's not a big thing. It's it's an obstacle to either overcome or just leave it. So what? I dropped that into you know, the chat. Here, let me cover this real quick. Here, uh, which one is it? But you know, when when things when things go bad for people, they usually want to fight. Fight. It's fight or flight. Or freeze. And I took the and I took the flight. Nah, I guess fuck it. Go forward. You, got, you know, I'm not going to that. That freeze is often left out, or, or even I'm not going to get pause. younger. Well, so, I'm just saying so, that the responses that uh, that one has, fight or flight. That that's that's really uh, fits here. What he was talking about about the cops coming. See, lucky. And that, let, no. let me tell the story, Flash, please. Yeah, no, I was reading the chat out loud. Sorry, oh, Vince. Go ahead. I, <laughs> no, I no, I did. Over. I dropped that link over there. It's uh, what rights do you have to stop cops from entering your house? So that's a warrant. How they can come in is by a warrant, by consent, or exigency. Exigency. I'm not saying that word right. Somebody say that right for me. <laughs> Ex- exigency. Ex- exigency. Uh, I would assume. Ex- what does it mean? Ex- uh, well, Reading extenuating it heard force. Of it. Yeah. So a warrant, of course, is um, that uh, they come. Then this is where we're getting these no-knock warrants and. 
So I believe this is the video where the, yeah, this is it. The cop here, former cop here, he talks about all these scenarios and why people are getting killed and cops are getting killed and, and talking about like the, the raid on Roger uh, Stone. They say, well, they don't want anybody destroying evidence is why they're doing this. Uh, this is their um, reasoning for a no-knock warrant. Now, there's consent, and consent comes about when uh, a, a knock and talk is, I think, what they call it. A cop comes up, knocks on your door, and and anybody that would tell you, of course, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to open up the door. Last time I had a cop come over here, it was uh, Sheriff Bradley and <laughs> Scott, and he, my door is open. He just come walking in, and I was taking an afternoon nap, and in the buff, and I said, oh, Scott, I said, hold on, I had a joint sitting out, too, but hey, I don't figure he had said anything about that, but I said, right, I'm going to get some clothes on, I'll come out and talk to him, but um, <laughs> anyways, consent, I'm going to go talk, yeah, that's me, I, I don't care, but uh, most people, when you open the door, uh, that's kind of like a foot in, and can I come in to talk to you, and you know, you got a warrant, now, exigency, exigency, Exec, oh, I'm gonna have to go the <laughs> go see how to pronounce that correctly. Anyways, that is uh so say a cop is chasing somebody, and um, this guy is fleeing. He's uh, got a gun, and um, he runs down the street, and he runs in, kicks somebody's door, and runs in. The cop, he is uh, he can follow through, uh, right on through into the house and out the back door and over the fence and uh, uh, right. Now, yeah. so maybe they're fishing, they come up in uh, uh, maybe a, a known drug premise, and so they come up and knock on the door, and uh, they know somebody's hanging out, and uh, they, uh, they're on paper, and uh, ain't supposed to be doing dope, and surely not hanging out in the, a drug house for certain, right? So they say, hey, is old Joe around? And uh, uh, so I'm Joe. And well, that's that's uh, right there. They can come in on probable cause. They smell weed. They can come probable in. cause. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. And and if they hear somebody like help, 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 help me, they can yeah, come in. Sure. So this is what this word means. Then what's the SCOTUS ruling for then? Well, on which one? The one I quote. Well, tell me. The it police again. have no duty to oh. protect you. Oh yeah. Whoever that's... you are. Yeah. It's They're... on. It's to their own discretion. Well, so I'm going to tell they, you all those why things. Why are they chasing everybody uh, through your house well, if they don't have to? Well, all those things that I read that they're in uh, in uh, in their po- in pursuit of policy or police, then mm-hmm. then that is uh, go back to what you was calling that all that stuff commerce. Any, anyways, because most yeah. likely any any one of those reasons that they're going to be there is to mm-hmm. engage you and. Um, and it, and it also it justifies the intrusion with cameras and uh, internet and you know RFID chips and all this other shit. People are lining up to be part of because it's going to be so convenient because the, their individual in them has been snuffed. There is nothing individual about them. They want to be part of the group. Let me vote and let me vote loud because I want to be right. By God, country. You know, and then when you vote and you don't get your way, then you bitch about the guy that got his way. What? What? So I have this other theory. Why? Why wouldn't we just do what's best for all people, all life, carbon based life forms and cut this political shit out and this religious and this education? It's nonsense. It's got it's caused all this trouble. Simplicity will make things so much nicer. Funny you say that. Let let come look at the chat here. What I, you want to say? Simple? How, how hard can this be? I'm having a hard time saying this word. Look how they put it there for you to be able to say it. Mm. Uh, oh wait, it didn't paste everything. Well, go look up the word yourself, somebody. But it's like what? <laughs> I've got to hear it said here. I'm gonna push exigency. The- exigency. exigency. Exigency requiring immediate action. Or remedy. Hmm. See, See how easy that was to say? <laughs> Exigency. I knew I could say that word, but yeah, man, it looks like a know. Russian word down here, dude. Let me see I don't if know. I can get this to copy. I've never used the word in my whole life yeah, till well, right now. Upside nope. down word or letter. I don't plan to use it in the future either. Um, 
but well, it goes into that see, legal stuff. But right, but people, you know, people that uh, they, talk like I not, do. What the hell, dude? Oh, I know what's going on. I don't know what you're talking about, but people that talk like I do about life, where they've been, and what they've done, are used to people that say, nah, you didn't do that. No, you couldn't have done that. Or, oh, you're lucky. Well, I could see getting lucky once or maybe twice, but for 59 years, that's hard to explain. It's got to be more than luck. I think it's intention. I think your intention, whatever your real intentions are deep down, because, uh, I mean, I had a 10-year thing that at the end it was like, no, it ain't working. Well, Why? Maybe my intention was for it not to work because I wanted to do something else in Scotland and I couldn't uh, do both things at the same time. So something had to go. And my mom wanted to stay alive, so I took that road instead of being loyal to somebody that wanted me to be back in the States. That's awesome. That's a, well, that's a right, special but, privilege that not a lot but, of people uh, are ever afforded. You know, Dan, but to friend, not get, Dan in Tennessee – he, he yeah, had to, to be able what? to sit with his mother for her last couple of years yeah, in this yeah, world. Yeah. I chose it over my life in North Carolina, and instead, it, and instead of bringing me more rain, when that came to a, a bubble, I met Circle. And what? Wow! Because the my first thought was, Ah, this woman's full of shit. Nobody's that good. Nice. I don't. I think I told her that, it, and that was my first comment to her. And then, hey, how are you? Oh, but you're full of shit because nobody's that nice. <laughs> and then uh, as the time went on, I, I finally got the got the wherewithal to meet her nose to nose. And I found out, you know what? She is that nice. Nice. Yeah. But, you know, she's human. She's got, you know, ne- she's got a negative side just like everybody else. But you got to bring it out of her. She doesn't bring it to you. You know, it, it's hard to explain. Uh, but she's not a combative. I'm combative. She's not so much. It's Me, like the, I can argue with you. It's like seeing the, <laughs> the actual person inside the figurehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's hard to explain, man. But, uh, I understand. Well, shit, I don't. I'm living it. And my explanations always bring me, well, you're just lucky. I don't, I don't know. I'm starting to think there's more to this resonance, frequency. And like well, a couple of weeks ago when uh, – I did a, I did, what was it during the week? Um, in a perfect world, and Rob Works got on the brainwaves, you know, what you think, you got on me too about it, and uh, what you think, and how you speak, and what you type, and all these things make a difference, but, you know, not like I'm so special, I haven't been numbed down in my own fucking way, come on, you know, I got my hard side for survival for a reason, and, uh, you got to remember the person doing it doesn't know what they're always doing. They're, you're not self-aware. You're more aware of what other people are doing than what you're doing yourself. Oh, yeah, I think it, that's right. Right. Yeah. Because when I'm doing something, even if you know I, I sound like the rudest prick in the world, maybe my intentions aren't aren't that bad, but the words sound bad. So you got to think about you know what's going on here, what's really happening, and. We're not all in tune to that wavelength to pursue that as an answer. What more is there to what I see? There you go. And I think a lot of people are just too easily satisfied with answers. (laughs) Yeah, they're too easily satisfied with answers given to them by what they look up to as authority, and that's the weakness. You know, if you doubt it and you question it, then you're at the dork table. There you go. Guaranteed. Ah, uh, thank you, Grim Dork. But uh, Grim Dork. Well, he says it's good to hear you dorks working together again. Uh, yeah, I appreciate hey. that. Because, but see, I'm just being me, and I'm telling you, if things don't work out in life, I think they're working badly. I uh, I leave them. I don't have time to spend doing things that I think are bad for me. Yeah, I I. Like I yeah. said, we're so much alike, and that's uh, that's blaming what I do. you for nothing. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I I do the same thing, and that's like um, it's easier just to uh, leave it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And tomorrow, I mean, it's a big world and it's a big life. And there's all kinds of opportunity out there you don't even know about. So tying yourself down to anything or anyone, it should be a choice that you make, that you're willingly making, not being held hostage by somebody. That's fucked up. Well, I've taken and, a big and, step in reducing yeah. some of that. You know what I'm starting to do is pull mm. the pages out of the notebook, and uh, I've, ah. I've got I've got three boxes full. So uh, <laughs> as I yeah. use them, I'm going to tear them out, and like it's not like anybody can read my writing, anyways. That I need to worry about somebody coming along one day to read it. But right. the it's hope just, is, uh, is yeah. to put it into the ether, anyways. Yeah, but dwindle it down to the important components, mm-hmm. right? I think I got a friend that'll probably stick me in the ground up here and uh, dig me a hole and uh, yeah uh, you know when I leave this world but uh, whatever I got uh, I mean what is it stuff I there ain't nothing I'm going to have to worry about when I'm dead and gone right mm. yeah I would like to hey, be stuck you know, in the ground though and maybe a Speaking of that though, when uh when 11 came and I went to Scotland and all that uh and finding the internet that internet information is what made me look back at North Carolina and see the mistake it would have been for me to return there. No matter, you know, I would have been more financially successful had I went home. But the problems I saw coming, you know, with the 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 woman was pro medicine and everything I'm against for. Republican. I mean, we we disagreed on every level of of society there was. In the you know, in the end, it was just not. We weren't together. We didn't think alike. We didn't have anything in common. So when you know, when you get there with somebody, if you're going to choose your financial life over your personal life, well, then you don't deserve either. <laughs> you probably won't end up with either either. But that's another you know. That's just an observation from the Dork Table podcast. Chloe because told me not to throw the pages away. Hey, you know what we? Uh, why? I, uh, oh, I almost told you what to do. I we're going. Uh, we got thirty. What? We we'll go to the bottom of the hour and we'll make it a three-hour broadcast. Oh, jeez, are we on that long? I don't care. Yeah, might we'll as well edit we'll probably, it out. I, I'm do probably going to have to take my uh, set off here and. Uh, Go kick it. There's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing going on on Saturday. We're not going to hurt anybody's schedule. Yeah. We are the Saturday lineup. <laughs> I got all the odd days that nobody else wanted, <laughs> and it, and I get ridiculed for having three shows. But you know, crying out loud, I don't see anybody else doing it. Yeah. You, you got something on Friday. I, I mean, when I started this, out, I took Thursdays at eight o'clock because it was the most unobtrusive time that I, I could get the the least of. Uh, demand on air and mm. so 66 episodes at uh ucy.tv and for a year mm. uh, i was shaking like a dog crap in tax every time i was fixing to come on the, to radio <laughs> I mean, yeah i mean we, mm. we have a, a certain amount of responsibility accountability mm. yeah well you know i talk about Guys I worked for in the construction trade all, all along my life. There was a tree trimmer in Florida I used to work for. Well, he said to me one day, he says. <clears throat> he goes, uh, Thank you, Graham. And, and, I, at the, and again, at the time, I was like 30, 31. I was a young, dumb shit. Didn't know fuck all, but I had a great memory. And Doug looks at me one day. He goes, you know what? You got to remember, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? Hmm. Eh? Hmm. Okay. Let it go. Now I think about, hey, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? And I choose happy. Because right right is where all the fighting comes. That's why I don't fight with anyone. What are you fighting about? You if you see things from a different perspective than the other person, then the only way you can meet middle ground is to abandon the argument. And people don't know how to do that. They want to be right. Now, I want to be happy. I don't give a fuck if you're right or if I'm right or if I'm wrong. I don't care about any of that. I just want you to stop yelling or whatever the problem, you know, not you, but whoever. I just want Whom, the – Whomever. I want the calm. Yeah, I want the calm back. I, I don't like – I'm like that dog, man. I like the peace and calm and the balance. And when things irritate me, bark, 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 you know, it makes my, my blood pressure go up and – 
you know, I can feel the hair on the back of my neck, you know, moving. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit, but, <laughs> um, well, we're human. We've been designed to react to these things this way. And to get control of it is so fucking difficult. You know, and I, what I mean by get control of it is not to blame you for the way I feel about something you said. It's not you. It's the said. It's what happened that matters. Yeah. How and you, it was and what interpreted. You, and what you yeah. just said, too, about you want to be happy or you want to be right. Yeah. So I don't, why, yeah, why do be. people, why do pe- so many people have, uh, you know, believe uh, fallacies? Is Well, they, first of all, it's circular. They believe it, so therefore uh, they have to be right because that's just uh, self-preservation in most. i got to be right. So uh, a person is apt not to, uh, uh, like you were saying again earlier, that be able to look at themselves. Yeah. And that's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. It's easier for me to tell you, uh, uh, you did this and you did that, and not look at why do I get upset when people do a certain behavior. And then how do you let them know? You don't. They'll figure it out themselves, or they won't. See, if it continues, then you know that's the problem, not you or him. It's got nothing to do with the people in it. It's the behavior that we interpret. Eh, it's personal. You know? And I don't know. I'd just rather not yell and scream. And, and I don't. I like bar, you know, to uh, argue and banter. disagree. Banter. But to... To take it serious and personal or to put words in there that make it look that way, is, that's not what I'm after. I'm more for the giggle, you know, because. Yeah, I really, you people, know, I, I wasn't really trying to, you know, be no, like no, I know, evil but the people, mean to the you. The people to... that, know, that know what we know, Vinny, are so rare. I mean, we've even got people on the RLM that don't know. We know that. They don't know that. They think I'm insane. But that's okay. You know, that's the. You know, that's the price I pay for talking in in the, the state of word I speak in. <laughs> well, I I've, I think I said it yesterday. I uh, absolutely support uh, people's opinion. Uh, I, I can't remember what the rest I say. Yeah, you have a right to your opinion, and, you know, you have the right to be wrong. <laughs> it, it does, but it, it doesn't. That's a joke. Right. That's a joke. Right, and it, see, it, it doesn't matter until you do something physical. It don't See. matter. That's a good well, song. Well, okay, but still, it, it really doesn't. Until you take a physical action in this life, whatever the event you're talking about or deciding about or whatever this other bullshit is, it's just ideas. But we've been trained to take things way too serious. And, you know, even I can let my sense of humor fall asleep and get away from me for a minute. I'll be right back. And with that, Cause I be shopping for some rats. I think uh, I want my rat. What, which rat do I want? <laughs> I want some gimmicks and some gizmos, and uh, I want to read the headlines. And uh, what else do I want to do? Uh, what is there to believe anyway? Oh, I know. I could believe whatever the hell makes me happy. What about that? Is that living in La La Land to believe that your your wife and your dog and your cat just think the world of you no matter how you you uh, might not think they do, but they still do? <laughs> I go to the grocery and I swear the dog's wagging her tail every time at the door like I've been away. <laughs> I've, I've gone off to you know the other side of the world to go do something. And, and she there she is sitting up by me right now. And I think she knows I was talking about her because now she wants some attention. But life will give you whatever you ask it to give you, and then you got to adjust to what it gave you. It's not, it's not as easy as maybe I make it sound, Moose. It's just uh, the right things in life are uh, they're, they're not dictated to me like they are to everybody else. I I don't have the same uh, value system of social uh, social construct. Uh, Social conventions, none of that stuff really matters to me. You know, people don't like me. I don't. I don't mind. That's their fucking right. Now, if somebody doesn't like me and they take a physical act because they don't like me, then then, then the rules changed. At that point, I went from being a a sensible, nonviolent anarchist to being a defensive American. And it can happen in the blink of an eye. But 
I'm so old now. I haven't been physically attacked in so long. I probably wouldn't recognize the signs if I saw them. <laughs> you know, it's I got, like I got the quote out of sight, out of mind. You know. Thank you, Chloe. Did you see it? No. What in the chat? Out she for a rip. That's just uh, so. This was Vinny Viponiti. Uh, that's really butchered Russian. Uh, anyone is welcome. I can't even say some of my names. Flash, don't don't be ashamed. Yeah, anyone is welcome to. Let me pull that mic back. There we go. Uh, sure. Anyone is welcome to disagree with uh, me at any time. I support your right to be wrong. Thank you. Yeah, that's how I said it. Yeah, I know that's hot, and it's very fuff. very fuff, 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 funny. But the reality of it is, the individual, okay, doesn't really care. We're we're taught to think we care about this shit when we really don't. We're it's a distraction from shit that you should care about, like wavelengths and magnetics and vibrations. All these sciences, all these egghead things that they made look so difficult that with a little patience can be explained to you by you know somebody with a little hands-on experience. And it doesn't, you don't need to remember it all. You just need to get on that vibration and understand it. Imagine. And understanding it doesn't mean I can re, re explain it because you're hearing what I'm saying according to the way you understand the language I'm using. So it translates, maybe sometimes it don't. You know what's neat is. Wow, uh, you, she's. Whoa, good moose. Okay, oh, sorry. There's uh, the crystals. The, I wonder. I mean, you'd have to probably go really deep in the earth, and we don't probably have the technology to get deep enough to get uh, crystals as big as uh, buildings. But uh, say, that, <laughs> say that you could build one as big as a, um, I don't know how big you'd have to build it, a house, uh, out of glass or whatever. Could you do that, I wonder? But look at the frequencies involved in that. If you could take, and uh, I can imagine energy being produced from uh, contrasting frequencies in together and redirecting in a power you look at uh remember the old transistor radios didn't they have a uh did they have a a crystal in there and they're a crystal battery or something now i heard one Don't time know. a long time ago there was a playground black top playground and uh it had iced over i don't know how thick the ice was but uh and the rest of the circumstances there may have been some uh, uh playground equipment involved in and causing this signal, but it was acting as a, a radio receiver, and it was playing the the words off the radio, vibrating out of the right there. Just just an accident. You know, just imagine what the mind of man could do in something like that, and applying frequency for energy. They start limiting and limiting us at school. They start pigeonholing you into do this and do that and don't explore. And if you explore life like I did, you see things from a completely different perspective than people that didn't. And, well, they were busy, you know, obeying, obeying the rules and being good and all that horse shit. And I, I didn't even ever think anything I was doing was really all that damn bad any damn way. No matter how bad it was, I didn't give a shit because... Uh, I think because my old man just kind of put that idea in my head that whatever I believe is my business and nobody can tell me what to think. Not even him. So I went, hey, well, fuck you. Let's see if this works. <laughs> and I experimented on my father. And my father didn't like it. But uh, that's another story. <laughs> and here And here we sit, you know. Natural man is back. Talking the legal jargon in montana you know see and the whole thing about this law stuff is if you don't apply their own game to fight them back with you can't win doesn't matter how freaking smart you are what lawyer you use it matters about what goes on the record i'm going to tell you what if you find yourself before uh, a court then yeah. you have uh, you've maneuvered wrongly and you have, uh, allowed yourself to to be put there by it. yeah you know but sometimes you've you've got to take that hard stand though uh you know you... depends on the crime and see this is this crime shit crime is supposed to have a victim 
See, we're one more scam, one more con. Words are now crimes. Thoughts are crimes. They got face crime <laughs> now, I guess. Uh, I've or seen the thing. links about it. Yeah. yeah, fuck. We're I have we're actually serious opened one. I haven't actually opened not one single link on that kid. Or yeah, what for? Yeah, Catholic. You thing. hear enough wow. echoes about all that stuff that uh, Catholic. See, organized religion to me is just that. It's, it's like you think I'm trying to be a Jew. I'm just saying. This is how ridiculous the whole fucking thing is to I me. I have been to a lot Not of that I am one. in different denominations, too. When I was uh, traveling, I, I spent a lot of time up there at uh, Mount St. Michael's and uh, got to know nuns. That was like, that was pretty wow. cool. It was weird. It's like, wow, there, there are people inside those uh, things. Are <laughs> <laughs> well, in my and, traveling, I avoided the churches and, and just people, you know, jobs and uh, whatever have you that would come up interests me to to want to stay somewhere for any period of time it was always about people yeah and in my younger days i really got into the rock bands that was a lot of fun that was a fun time but i didn't want to stay put in anywhere and be a part of that i just like being around it hey we got bumped off or something here are we still Uh oh we oh i guess we're back on we're, I don't know. I guess I've we, lost off. We but. broke the rec. Ah, we broke I, the record no, anyway. we're okay. We're okay. We're back. We're Let just. Let me go look at we're, stuff. We're making up for lost time because I I did a, uh, in a in a perfect world where my headset died an hour into the show. <laughs> yeah, we we dropped off and for then, three uh, three minutes ago, but we're back on. It looked like it just. And then like a, the next on. one I did, I forgot to record. <laughs> I huh. did everything else. Grim helped me out, and, but I forgot. I did the record thing I've wrong. Done that Fucking butt. Why does it have to be so hard to use your butt? <laughs> Is that God telling me something? <laughs> Told him you some. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know, but they got a lot of people convinced that uh, a marginal. A marginal group in a population is an entity that needs to be recognized. So now everybody on the planet that's got a you know one or two friends that are you know like into fucking camels or whatever, they start a club. You get government protection. You get you know then you get your rights back because the government can keep track of you that way. They sell you your rights. Hey, you want to be protected? Come over here, my friend. I will protect you. You, oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, did I share that? I don't yes, know. Yes, I I've got yeah. the protection for you, my friend. Where's <laughs> that? Let me go get my area. Ah, Rib door cowboy tech. It, anti just anti. popped up. Hey, I, I, Bolitas. Me and Vinny, me and Vinny are doing a marathon to raise money for the real liberty media dot com. We're here to dig into your pocket. Dig deep. Yeah. Send Grim money Thank right you. now. Get it out of your pocket. <laughs> We've gone two hours and thirty-five minutes and Holy have neglected, <laughs> neglected to to even mention that. Yes, this is our uh, once a year. Uh, get your hand around behind your ear and dig deep. Yeah, dig, 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 dig. <laughs> it won't hurt Grim if you help him pay the bills. And if you don't have it, that's this isn't at you. This is only at people that have little excess and can afford it. If you can't, if you're working and you can't do shit, then you can't do shit. Just uh do what you do, like chatting and radio and shit like that. <laughs> but if you got pockets full of money and you brag about all the shit you got in life, eh? Grim don't brag. <laughs> Grim's a very frugal, simple fella, but you know, help help isn't bad. He's <laughs> he won't say no. <laughs> Maybe he'll grow you a turnip. <laughs> hey, he, we he can, don't eat turnips. I don't think. I bet you a yeah. dollar to a donut hole that he don't eat uh, turnips. But I'll bet you we could get him if to get a thousand dollars a turnip, and then he'd grow some. <laughs> seen, send me a thousand dollars. I send you my New Mexico radiated turnip. <laughs> You see Cool Hand Luke, the movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, fuck yeah. 50, 50 boiled eggs. I got Of course, he, he didn't really do that. But. Well, a poop do in place of poop. Well, <laughs> but they, they filmed that to look like that. That was very convincing. But yeah. That was a good movie. One of the best movies. Doing That's probably 90, the, I ain't scary because yeah. I've got 
the Virgin Mary. Top hundred. Me that I won't go to hell. Now we got a, a musical interlude from the dork across the water. Oh yeah, I've got a new uh, platform here for making new sounds. You know what I did? I got this big old uh, marble. It's uh, what? Let's see, one. I was two. pooping for you. Thank you. You did good. Ah, it's uh, it's about two and a half a foot across and uh, about <laughs> near two foot deep. But big old slab of marble. So I set it on my table, and it's so heavy that I can extend it out past the original lip there. And it's nice. And plus, you know, it remains cool for uh, my computer to sit on there. And it's a very poor design on this thing on the bottom. It's like uh, hardly any clearance for drawing air. And I had it propped up in the air all the, just till maybe a week or so ago, sitting on a little box. So it'd be all like surrounded with uh, air underneath of it. And uh, never even thought to look that the uh, fan was right there in the middle where you'd balance some. It's like the you, we're talking about the programs earlier. Why they got to make stuff stupid? It, it's been enough time that you know we don't have to put up with stupid anymore. You would expect Vinny, but no, that's the whole point. This the, the obsolete the obsolete thing there has is. got people trained to replace stuff. They're used to the idea. Instead of buy one and make it last, and you know as long as possible. It's buy it until it breaks and then buy another one because they're so cheap and they're made out of crap. So we get what we pay for unless you want something good and good things are pricey. I've never heard anybody else say it and I'm pretty sure I may have been the one to coined it or maybe I just recalled it and don't mm. remember. But I well, call it the Big Lighter Society. <laughs> the just yes. in time. That's <laughs> Yeah, Use it up, throw thing. it away. Yeah, look yeah. at the uh, look at the eighteen wheelers. Now, say uh, you got your big truck and had a Cummins in, engine in it, and you done did you a West Coast turnaround and come back and yeah, you, you had to rebuild your engine. Well, you'd pull it in the barn and uh, climb up in there with it, and take it apart and redo it all, and stick her back in there and be back out on the road first of the week. But now you ain't getting in there and touching nothing. They've got stuff all in the way. And anything mm-hmm. you need to get to, you can't get to for no, some right. reason. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the design, because well, hell, when you worked on your '64 Chevy Biscayne, I'm so small I could sit inside the firewall on the hood with the hood up on the fire, you know, on the fender. Here's a fun fact that uh, you would think that this would be beneficial, but it's not. So it's a rheumatoid arthritis. Like with my feet, I put them together, and my toes make a perfect. Uh, 90 degree right there. I could like be a carpenter or something. My hands do the same thing. I like I'm perfect for advertising, right? Where's I need a Joe's? Where's it at? I don't see those I, around the corner. Yeah, excellent point. Around the corner. Uh, well, and then like being cross-eyed, Grimner, you know. Who, who's this Grimner, guy looking at? They ask me. Who are you? Who are you pointing at? Grimder puts the show out in a lot of places, a lot of new places. I don't usually. Um, say much about any of that i leave that up to you and you didn't do that this time either do what but you know talk about all the places Graham works to put us on you know I never twitter do. and i never do. I, you, you don't either uh i thought you did i must be thinking of mary i uh i deal with i haven't uh, done twitter radio with mary in YouTube a long time and but. facebook and uh rlo uh, i i've neglected uh freedoms network and minds and uh me we and um with some of them other ones, a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Here it is. I got it. Here we go. Uh-oh, it's a fun razor. Yes, yeah. we're, we're scraping we're do- by yeah. Real Liberty Media, and your donations are appreciated. Uh, yep. Yeah. Find us over there on the PayPal and all kinds dig, of dig, fun dig. ways to play and pay and uh, help us along the way. It is the Think. time of the year once again to donate to Real Liberty yeah. Media's and- annual fun. Razor, I mean, fundraiser. <laughs> yeah, but think of how much more fun that Grim would be if we sent him enough money so he could afford to smoke a lot of bowls. <laughs> I wonder how he does that. I never even asked him. <laughs> I don't know. Because, you know, you got to guard your gross. words again. I don't, you know, I don't somebody know starts I'm... asking me questions to implement me into a crime or even the suggestion. Oh, I'm, yeah. I say, right. oh, what's fuck. up with you, man? You wired? What's up, Jack? Yeah, all that. 
I don't, I don't know. They, see, it's all that exaggerated shit over the years about weed. You know, and they're doing it again, too, in the press. Oh, man, they're, uh, pot is the death, and uh, it causes mental problems. Hey, you, every fucking lie we've been through in the 60s and the 70s and that, to now is just being regurgitated to the same people that bought it the first time and they're just being reinforced. Yeah. They're telling you lies so they can sell the devil's lettuce. It's evil. <laughs> Follow me. I know where I'm going. Yeah. A fundraiser. That's right. Fundraiser. <laughs> I like that. Best kind. I, I don't know. know what? I, I have a I, shave. I shave once every six months or so. Really? Don't I, I sweetie? About I once a year, twice a year. I don't think I've yeah. shaved in a year, probably. Good. Hey, I seen pictures of you, so hey, wait a well, minute. Well, I'm not sporting a beard. I cut it off with clippers. Oh, you're okay. Yeah. No, that's but I, nice. I, yeah. When I was a kid, my dad says, "Once you start shaving, you'll have to keep <laughs> shaving." So never stops. I yeah. never shaved you, on a schedule. You neither. Except for when I was in the penitentiary, and then you had to. And maybe yeah, it caught me out one time. You gave me a, one of them old cheap razors and. Uh, had to dry shave. I was in my 30s before I, I could even grow a full beard. My facial hair took forever to catch up with my age. I looked, about, I looked about 20 until I was about 40. Huh. And now at 59, I look about 80. <laughs> right, honey? Oh, she says no. <laughs> uh, Okay. I'm going back and look at the uh, pictures. Vinny, yeah. Vinny, Vinny, yeah. Vinny, Vinny. Weed can kill you if enough bales fall on you. That's the truth, too. But that how do you tell? Too. See, how you can't get your foot in the door well, with the people that too, need to, You didn't see these. The people. What? You didn't I was see going these. on a rant. I know, I but I got to interrupt that. you, man. We got we got big shouts out from, from Dork Cakes, man. We got, we got the Flash. In a giffy, Ooh. and we, we got the vini, vini, vini. Oh, okay, oh, you're all bragging and shit, eh? Yes, on dirt cool. cakes. Did you not see what he did for us? It's Manifest awesome. Money. Now, well, I, there's so much chat. How the hell do I know what you're talking about until you tell me? You I told stop it, to it. You. you're making me all crazy. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't read and talk at the same time. I'm not that talented. Who's Chloe talking to? I don't know. Not me. She don't like me. Because I, I don't believe that um, jet fuel burns hot enough to melt steel. So something's wrong with it that doesn't. story. It's kerosene. Now, I you know, know we were talking know. about that earlier. They take that 42-gallon uh, barrel of oil, and yeah. you make 20 gallons into gasoline, and you take 11 gallons out of that and make diesel. And uh, you probably have to do just a little bit more. But basically, that's right about what you got there to put in the to, to melt steel with it's not going to happen where's if you the, have a inferno the you know, temperature like a, does, it a doesn't kiln? get hot enough yeah, well, well uh, please and all the buildings are designed for fire for fire, for fire reasons that they would not draft that they, they want the elevator shafts all that no 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 drafting um it would burn out self-contained you know it wouldn't spread and burn the building down and fall Where'd the building go, anyways, into that big hole? <laughs> they took it all away, man. They were hauling it out as fast as they could. You know, yeah, took, melted took steel, it put dripping on. steel. You know what they yeah, did but in not Waco? Melted. Oh, yeah. Some of it was. <laughs> yeah, it was dripping. You've seen that, right? No, I saw what I. I don't. I don't think I saw anything that convinced me of anything more than, boy, these guys are sneaky fucking liars. Mm-hmm. So, no, you, buildings don't fall that way no. unless they're planned. It's a demolition job. Jesus Christ. Well, do a little reading. <clears throat> Gravity, I may not d- agree with all the explanations and all these geniuses that have names and everything, but what I do know is something like that doesn't happen unless you plan it because if that building would have just fallen to one side or the other, ooh, you talk about bad. That was a control. Can I, <laughs> Three uh, of them in one day. Let me give you a couple of good examples, and uh, we'll see what uh, one might think about this. <laughs> Let's go to Las Vegas. You can call me Vegas uh, Vinny, baby. All right, uh-oh. we're going to Vegas, and what what is Vegas famous for? Hookers. Well, that was I figured that was probably the first choice for 
But uh, what? Big hotels and new ones. So a lot of times they got to tear the old ones down. So what do they do? They pay people big bucks to go in there and put all the right little bombs in all the right little places to go off at all the right time to make that thing fall down to the ground. You know what else has happened in Vegas that was pretty famous, uh, infamous, that uh, people died? It was the MGM fire. Uh, Now, I wonder if you could set a building on fire, a a big hotel, big high-rise building, instead of paying all that money for somebody to do all that work, putting all them little bombs in all them little places to go off at all the right times, why not just get you a book of matches and just go in there and drop you some rags down there in a little kerosene <laughs> shed or fire by golly out add some office furniture of course for acceleration <laughs> that's perfect sense hey there's to you Billy bob we're in the demolition building we're gonna take that barn down for you sure you bought your well, yeah did you get your zippo out of the truck johnny <laughs> hey i seen a link yesterday about the uh the Murrow building in Oklahoma City. And in in that explosion, not one government worker was injured that morning. Well, the uh, what department was it the FBI or the ATF? Uh, yes. It was a yes. certain department only that no, had No, all of them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe eight, I'm wrong, there, but I thought it was you find specific. A, There's the a lot of claims, people died. Right, but <laughs> not the state people. You <laughs> Come on. I don't know. I wasn't there. But you I did I? Pictures. But I'm I'm reading shit on the internet, and this stuff is so entertaining. And it's either true or it's not, one way or the other. The end result still remains. Whatever we're told, no matter what you've been told, it's always subject to. Oh, uh, I don't know. That doesn't sound right. And that's the goal: the misdirection, and instead of just this is the way the fucking thing happened. Period. <laughs> They tell you 30 different ways it could happen so that you can be in confusion about it and argue and bicker and this didn't happen and that did, you know what the end result still fucking happened. Well, let me say, how it happened don't really matter. Right. Let, let's say this right here because this is a big part of this censure going on in the, in the social media or whatever. Um, if uh, if you think that 9/11 was an inside job, if if you think that the Earth is flat, you know they're they're censoring platforms. What difference does it make? Matter of fact, if somebody's wrong, I want them to say more and more and more. Because what did you say at the the beginning of the broadcast about uh, lying? Uh, You can't you can't keep lying and tell the same lie. You got to keep building on it and fabricating on it, right? Yeah. So keep talking. Keep talking. That's what I say. But the truth, if if you just repeat what you see physically, see mentally, see however you gauge whatever C is to you, and you repeat that, even if you're wrong, you're still telling somebody else what you think is the truth. Yeah, that's good. No matter what it is. Well, right, but we're still supposed to argue if we disagree and and try to get the other guy to see what you say. You can't. It's not designed to be that way. The design of the argument is for us to be on opposite sides of it, whoever we are. We're not supposed to agree. We're supposed to disagree about everything. Well, I believe that at some point in time, a person can come to a, a standardized agreement at something like what time are we going to have supper, you know? That's important stuff that needs to be known for sure, right? Well, but you're an outside fellow. Which is easier to handle, a herd of wackadoodle uh, animals that are running off in all fucking different directions or a group of docile that wait and stand in one place until they're told to move. I had this old mama count several years there ago. There you go. She knew, yeah. what, she knew where she was headed. It's in the herd of the Packers. That's what the, you get Hormel chili. Used to, they'd drag them in there, just cankers and cancer and uh, cut that off and grind the rest up and Make stew meat and chili meat and that sort of thing. <laughs> but she was old, she wore out. Yeah, Charlay, Mama Cow. One of the I don't, I've never seen a meaner cow. I'm like, well, I think I had with uh, <laughs> with, with Clancy uh, cops up <laughs> there at the Bundy's. <laughs> yeah, 
she knew Sorry, she was going to get just, killed, and she wasn't yeah. having no part of it. You know, she took every everybody there to get her in the cell barn, and I hated to be part of it, really. But I, I tell you, the fun part of that story is is that uh, it's uh, this old cowboy, he's rodeo cowboy, and uh, black man. So there's not a lot of black folks around uh, this part of the world. Anyway, see, uh, nobody really, how yeah, they do. Yeah, I was going to say nobody would give them a second look, but that'd be a lie. Uh, yeah, that would be a lie. Yeah. But anyway, so he was wore out. I mean, that cow had us wore out. We was fighting her a long time. And he'd sit back up against the uh, one of the corrals and uh, old hog pen, and I snuck up inside there, and I goosed him with my stick. I said, woo! <laughs> and jabbed him went at it at the same time. He jumped up, and I'm glad that there was railing between me and him because I believe he's killed at the moment. <laughs> Scared the piss out of him. <laughs> well, you you are a little abrupt Sometimes, Vincent. Uh, sometimes? You know what my trail name was on the Appalachian Trail? Uh, too far. It's, too far. It, <laughs> yeah, not, you go too far. It's not necessarily just the trail was too far. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of gravitate day. towards extreme people. Even extreme people, I don't care to, to uh, I don't care for them, <clears throat> so to speak. You know, well, all there is is bickering back and forth, but there's still a balance in life, and you know, if life was perfect and we were in a perfect world, we wouldn't have anything to complain about, but we do. And sometimes all we got to complain about is each other. I, I don't have much <laughs> it's in to our nature. About. I wish I had that other one <laughs> up in front of me. I think it's over on Real Liberty. Yeah. Talks about what makes a, a person happy in life. They don't take much. I mean, full belly, got a uh, roof over your head, warm clothes. Water, clean water, man, that's that's something that a lot of people in the world take for granted. Uh, hey, I want to give Grim a little thing here. He says, uh-huh. uh, we did, we covered the clap saying weed kills people during this show, and he posted it. The Freakers Ball, I haven't seen it yet because um, I was not uh, up for it when it was on live. But I was going to catch the show, and it seems that we've connected <laughs> once again because these topics, whether we're wearing them out or whatever the fucking thing is, they need to be set, you know, and people need to be reminded if it's every fucking day until something changes. And who knows what is going to catapult us into this, the next thing where you can get free of all this crap that we're basically being held hostage by. I found it. Whoa, it's he from, found it. From Java Doctor. Ten signs you're doing well in life. Yeah, there's ten of them. We're gonna count them off. One, you have a roof over your head. I was uh, almost back in a tent a year ago this time last year. <laughs> I loved it. Oh, yeah, I loved I tra- it. I traveled hitchhiking across the United States with a, a backpack. Shit, didn't give a fuck if I had a place to stay or not. There was always a park or a tree somewhere with my name under it. Well, there you go. So, didn't even need a roof. So, you're, we can check, you only need nine so far. Number two, you yeah. ate today. Now, we know you only eat oh, once yeah. a day. Oh, yeah. Got to eat. So, one, we don't once know a day. whether yeah. you've ate yet or not. But we're going to yeah. count that as you've got number two. Well, I've eaten uh, already more than once today. So, uh, mm. got a nice roof over my head. Uh, you have a good heart. I well, I'll tell you this. I do. Sometimes I might be a little mean. Sometimes I might yeah. like to poke a person just a little more than not, too, but it's, uh, it's generally in good nature. But hitchhiking, I'm sure you remember, when I was in my young days, hitchhiking, that was one of the things that writers would always, hey, have you eaten lately? Because, you know, they've you been go. it, they've number done four. it yourself. Yeah. You wish good for others. Very good. See there. Now on to number five. We're going to fill you up here, and we're going to count number one as well as a roof over your head, because that's not all the time. And sometimes you do it just for the pure pleasure of being under the open skies and the starry, starry nights. So yeah. number five, clean water. I've got some of the best water you'll find in the world right here. And I've drank water from a lot of places, and there ain't many places that got any better. You got good clean water? Or do you got that Russian stuff? Are they selling I don't know. Russian water? From uh, the plant, yes. I don't know yeah. if it's right. I would say it's Danish. It's well, probably Danish. But well, it, it says Danish. You know, you can say Danish, and that's good. It hasn't, it oh, hasn't killed me yet. Who, like, so who doesn't like a Danish? Right. But I don't I don't think that the Danes have been suckered into the uh, 
chemical crap like other other countries have. Does They're, somebody care for you, buddy? Number six. You, I think we got oh, you at six. Yeah. Number oh, yeah. seven. You strive yeah. to be better. I sure do. Sometimes I fall short, and other times I go too far <laughs> in the wrong direction. You have clean clothes. Uh, I, I yeah. turned my underwear inside out, so I think that counts as clean. You, have, you have a dream. Do you have a dream? No. I have a reality. I live my life with my eyes wide open. No, but I don't have a dream. I just do I what, like what's daydream, in front of me. Yeah. How so? Oh, I can think of many, many uh, things all in my mind. Yeah, I've created really? worlds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was a thing. There's a lot of ways of doing uh, time in prison. I'd draw. And, oh, yeah. Uh, well, so that's different uh, art and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, mostly uh, I was dreaming. And mm. building things in my head. Ah. And number 10, if you're dreaming, you're breathing. So uh, <laughs> I don't feel like I'm dreaming, though. I feel like I'm reeling. Thanks, Java I take, Doctor. I think life is, you know, my impression is, life, this is as real as real is. Whatever real means to me, that, that's enough. I get, I get what I want out of life, and I try to give back what I take. And sometimes I don't. Don't do a good job of it. But, you know, intention, I think, is more important than how other people see what, what happened. Because we're all looking on the other guy's action and deed with our own personal, you know, uh, prejudices, our indoctrinations, our upbringing, our religious and education. All these variables that weigh into to your thought process that you don't even know you use. Because you've been doing it your whole freaking life. But I think that if, if we were taught better about our, ourselves and the environment that we live in that we wouldn't be in this cesspool bucket of shit that we've got. But, hey, on the bright side, the Germans are talking about shutting down their nuclear facilities by 2022. Isn't that sweet? Mm -hmm. So hey, what uh, does that, how do what does like that tell you? What? Well, I'm, uh, I'm just looking at the closing out here. Uh, oh, okay. How, how, Let's I'll, go. I'll throw a little bit... Uh, for Grim here, I'll have to uh, uh, compress this here. <laughs> but here, this is where, this is where I'm uh, going with the, the paraphrase plagiarism of the title. We uh -huh. call it, you always have a choice. Good, because you do. Even if you don't think you do, it's just the choice that you have will rub you raw because it looks like a loser. And if you got faith in life, I suppose, faith in something... And you're not afraid of tomorrow? Go forward. See where life yeah. takes you. But most of us are tied to the, the possessions and the people. And and uh, if reality is saying it's time to go, then, you know, some of us have that ability to just go. Mm. Doesn't matter. You know, you're going to you're gonna get over whatever you lose in life, whether it's physical or emotional any damn way. So, I mean, if, if it's that bad, don't stay. That's right. There, there you go. And, man, uh, see, I'm not the one that didn't want to go to America. It was Cirque, you know, Cirque's family. So, yeah, I could take America or leave it. It's not anything to me. I know how to play America. Played it for 50 fucking years. I love America. I, I wouldn't want to live nowhere else. Sure and there you go. Well, I, see, and I, I don't I care like where. I would go down to Mexico. I don't know, care where I live. It doesn't matter to me. People are all the home. same. Ah, you Come big home. baby. See, hey, everybody's let me, uh, the let me sign people us to off me. Then I'll give us our All right. schedule. We're, okay, we're, thanks we're for taking three hours. Yeah, and, uh, we're okay. Gonna, we're going to do it again. Hour. We're going to do it Tuesday. Again. Yeah, we're going to do it again and uh, make it a perfect world. <laughs> Look, there, well, is, there is good people just like you and just like mm. me. So don't give up yeah. the world. And, I don't. And I just put down. things on hold until I figure it out. Yeah. No, I wasn't That's talking I, to you. I was closing out. Oh, okay. Here, I'll go ahead. <laughs> I'll go ahead and do that. So, listen, come on along tomorrow. And uh, if you like trivia and you, or if you like to just, like, make fun of uh, Alex Trebek, want to be people from Canada. <laughs> hey, hey, Frumpy. No, he's our, he's our uh, one good Canadian. Well, we can declare for sure. Uh, but they did build the wall. I heard this morning that uh, Canada has built the wall. So... Uh, maybe that'll slow them down along the way. 
What are we doing? Tomorrow we're going to play trivia. And that was some not real trivia. And start about a quarter till 11. My time, I'm in Central, so y'all can follow me or not. And then Grimner is playing blues along until about 12 noon uh, Oops, on the left coast, Pacific. Hal Anthony comes along from behind the woodshed. And learning how to get through this life and not get ran over by this beast and these occupiers. Key, don't be in the court. Stay out of court. Sometimes you can't help it, I know. Now, the Grim Leftovers comes along Monday. That's uh, still doing it at 7 o'clock, I believe. And Tuesday, we're back to a perfect world. And that is at noon central. Wednesday, Grams comes along at 6 o'clock in the evening in Kansas. Well, I'm not in Kansas anymore, but she is. So come on <laughs> along. Grams is a lot of fun. Look, if you got a little bit of a down heart in you and feel just like you, you just need something to really just touch you and lift you up, I promise you you're going to find it with Grammy Murray. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yes, yes. And now, she only has a little bullwinkle left in her voice yeah. to get over. She's I close. Got a bit. I got a frog. You ever had a frog? I call it bullwinkle, oh, but you call it a frog. Okay. Now, Thursday, we are got back to Flash, and that's right. Such a deal. 20% yeah. off. That's right. 20%. Come on, 7 o'clock right here on a real a liberty. We take your money. Uh, it's Yeah. Hey, we need some money from you. Yeah, please. money, money, money. Please, please, please. Yeah, 20% Deadline. off the flash. Such a deal. Yeah, my, my topic is going to be debt and toxins. Might do a whole series on it because it covers so much. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm going to be back next Friday again. Next Friday. Yeah, What Matters at Ponder Gander. It's a radio writing series. And uh, re just kind of going back from what I was starting with and just throw that back over there and just keep uh, on with our tunication. Just let it pile up and build and, and flow out as it does. There's so much information and other stuff that comes about that needs to be covered on this uh, part of the uh, the battle that I have uh, taken up as my cause. And uh, that's the, uh, the assault on the West, the ranchers, the miners, putting everybody off the land. Come on along. And there's so much there's so much detail involved in it too. Oh yeah. It's amazing. You know. The legal system is a fuck. It's a mess. It's bad. It is bad. And then that'll uh, bring us back to the freakers ball, y'all. But before freakers that ball. Grammy, we got another dose of Grammy at six o'clock, Kansas. <laughs> Grammy. On Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Ten o'clock my time is eleven East Coast. Uh, um that's right. Nine in the Enchanted Land of Grim. We have the Freakers Ball, y'all, and we got Frozen Moosey Pops. She may be thawed out by now. <laughs> no, she said she was back to 32. Yeah. So she's still freezing, but it's looking better than minus, like she was minus 15 or something. It was horrible. I still uh, it's, couldn't uh, imagine. I think it was worse than that with the wind. It was like minus 2 million or something yeah. for a couple of days. It was stupid. It's stupid. You Beyond, got yeah. to get brain damage and that uh, that kind of severity. It's like spending too know. many days out in the desert, you know, in the, yeah, in the shade yeah, or water. It's got to hurt yeah. you some sort of way. And then when the water, when that snow melts, mother of mother of <laughs> pearl, there is going to be a slushy mess somewhere. <laughs> well, I'm going to roll this out. I got a paragraph to read right here, and I'm going to thank right. y'all for coming along. Yeah, this had is, a good uh, time, Vinny. Yeah. So we yeah, we you're welcome. Thank you. Eleven, <laughs> uh, eleven. That's that's wishes, right? So the name of that movie I was talking about was uh, uh, it's I wrote down Blackout, but I think it's called The Blackout. Um, the yeah. What's what? What's it on Netflix or something? Oh, no, on YouTube. I don't do that. YouTube, Netflix, okay. Yeah, I don't even have a TV. Oh, I guess you don't need a TV. I, I'm right. Computer. The- what was it? The blackout? I, yeah, I'll uh, okay. Blackout. I'll give you a link when I'm, yeah, I'll share it to you. Oh, okay. Send me. Yeah, that'll yeah. Work. And I'll I'll include it into the blog too since I'm uh, uh, using the uh, paraphrase plagiarist uh, here. And, yeah. and don't you guys forget Grimm's Grimm's on his fundraiser. Fundraiser. We're gonna Be take nice. that beard off this guy. <laughs> We're not gonna have no more of this wolf man. Look, 
run around here howling and things late night on a Friday like somebody ain't got to get up and go to work next day. He always yeah, when, oh. he, when he shaves, when he shaves his face, we got problems. Just saying. Yeah. I uh, reminds me of this story, but that's a longer story. Let uh, let me. Good night, everybody. You <laughs> always have a choice. Eleven, eleven. Big wishes, even in a blackout. So, examine and find these depravities, man. That is this evil upon us. Fight it where you can, and don't throw yourself under the bus, though. Try to keep yourself <laughs> safe. Stay out of jail. Try to approach this where uh, they're not getting a hold of you. So a big, this is a big fight. This is for real. People uh, may seem to think that it's uh, something to be lied about, uh, but you know the hangman. They uh, they came for the they came for the rancher and they came for the miner, and then I wasn't doing nothing. I was just sitting here smoking a little weed. <laughs> Next thing you know, they are kicking my door in, shooting my dog. Yeah, got yeah. the bad damn jack boot on the back of my neck, and I'm like. Damn, man, it was just a little wee. Yep. But remember, there's good people just like you and me. So don't give up on the world. Let's do this. And look, look down that lonesome road before you travel on. Make sure where you're going and where you're going to be and where you end up. Deep. Well, I'm all done. How about you? Later, Gators and thanks. Gatorettes. Thanks, Flash. Love hey, you, thanks, Mac. Oh, wow. Adios. We'll see y'all. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Grimner. You're an awesome man. Awesome man. Depravity are us, baby. That's right. All right. Let me and go push some buttons. I'm going to go push. Push it uh-huh. real good. Well, that worked out pretty good. This I thought. stop and this one. Yeah, we were all bantering back and forth. Oh. About